Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Wherever you may be hailing from, welcome back. It's been a little while, a little over a week. I see many familiar faces still coming back. Familiar faces, familiar names. Hello, hello. Nice to see all of you again. It's like it's like a little like a like a high school reunion or something, but it's only been a week. Has anyone ever been to a high school reunion? I graduated from high school almost exactly 10 years ago, and I got no invitation to any kind of reunion, so I don't know if that's a thing that actually happens or if it's just uh, made up for dramatical purposes on television. I thought it was a month. <laughs> Has it felt that long, Zaniela? <laughs> Either way, high school reunions aside, um, YouTube's telling me no data. Are you get, are you guys getting data? Or is YouTube uh is, is YouTube lying to me? YouTube says no data, but it also gives me green bars, stream set status, excellent connection. No data. Oh, we are get we are getting some some lag. Any any laggers in chat? Data is being received. All right, it's being received a little later than usual, I think. I think the, the stream delay might be a bit longer than normal, but that's okay. We'll deal with it. Loaded for a second, but it's okay now. My preview window is just constantly buffering. I don't know if that's just on my end, but it's it's it, it seems like it's fine. No lag, stream lagging for me. Very choppy for you. We've gotten several standalone people. Oh dear, lag city. Hold on, hold on. Everyone, everyone hold on. It's struggling hard. It won't load. It's fine for me now. What is this madness? Literally, YouTube's like, hey, excellent connection. Ex it was it was saying no data for, for a few seconds there, and it was like, and everyone was like, no, it's fine, it's fine. And now it's saying excellent connection, and everyone's like, buffer, buffer, buffer. It's back now. It's okay. It stopped working. Give me give me a thumbs up if you've experienced any lag in the past 30 seconds or so. Give me a thumbs down if no. Give me a give me a panda emoji if you can't hear me at all. Still lagging, still loading, still, still, oh, okay. There might be some issues to, to deal with here. YouTube server actually just broken. And lots of, lots of thumbs downs, which at least means that you heard that part of the conversation, but just got lag. Buffer, buffer, buffer. I heard give me thumbs, but then it cut out. I've got, like, full... Full bars and full everything. Like, everything on my end looks, like, totally fine. Except that my preview window is also buffering. But YouTube's saying, hey, you're good. OBS is saying, hey, you're good. Be good now. It's back. What is happening? Excellent connection. Hello, hello. Testing, testing. One, two, one, two. This is your captain speaking. We may experience a slight bit of turbulence as your as the photons get sent to you through the fiber optic cables. Just bear with it. Lag has stopped. We're back. My my preview window is also no longer buffering. I think it's working now. YouTube doesn't isn't prepared for the amount of mail that we're about to open on this stream and it was trying to shut me down before I could even get started but I think we're all right I think we're okay I love photons me too it's a great word I think we're okay I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going like we're okay but feel free to spam buffer emojis at me if it's if it goes uh if it goes to ravioli town again YouTube is scared of the mail, exactly. I mean, I'm also scared of the mail. I don't know how long this is going to take, for the record. No, okay, I, I, let me preface this stream with a few things. 
number one, if you haven't been here for the Price of Perfection in the past, basically what's going on today is that we beat the challenge, but beating the challenge involved sleeping to year 111. And uh, in that time, we didn't check the mail like a single time. We, we, we may have checked a, one or two pieces of mail, but obviously it would have taken way, way, way too long to get to year 111 without, uh, or if we had checked the mail every day. So we got a lot to get caught up on. And I'm curious to see how the data bears out in this one. I don't know how long this stream is going to be. I, it's not going to be the full... We're not going to get through all the mail in this stream in all likelihood. I'm not about to pull a 12 hour stream or anything like that. Even if I did, I don't know if we'd do it. Um, it's probably going to be... I don't know how long I want this stream to be. I'm probably going to st start with minimum of three hours and then we'll go from there see how I feel. And then we'll do as many streams as it takes over the course of the next, you know, week or two. And we'll get through the mail. I'm excited to see. I'm very excited to see. What else I'm excited to see is all the different people who are in chat. Hello, hello. Familiar names and familiar faces. As well as po possibly new names and new faces. I'm missing out on so many Haley love letters. Exclamation point Haley. I don't think Haley sends an literally any mail. In fact, I know ha Haley doesn't send any mail, but... Uh... <laughs> That would have been nice if she did. Make a dedicated chest. I'm gonna have to. I was actually looking through the amount th through the things you can get for mail, and um, I was hopeful because in the last episode, the the first post challenge episode of the Price of Perfection, Haley says, "Let, let me help you de-stress." Haley is a PG-13 stream. Um, in the last episode. We did buy the full backpack upgrade for a full 36 inventory slots of, of rich goodness. But there's like 50 things you can get from the mail, so it's 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 unfortunate, but it'll it'll make it a little easier with the full inventory, obviously, but we're gonna need to have a chest on standby. Probably actually two chests, because each chest only holds like 36 things, right? Good luck with the mail, I'm a lurk now. Thank you, Anne. Thank you very much. Either way, no mail's gonna get read if we don't actually get into the game here. Am I scared? Am I, is that why I'm delaying so long? No, I'm not scared. I'm just nervous. I'm nervous sighted. But let's get into it, shall we? No new fan art to show off today, I'm afraid. But that's, you know, kind of to be expected. No new fan art, but, but wait. Chat, chat, do you hear that? Do you, do you hear that? I hear something off in the distance. What is, what is that? What is, what? Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Yo. Mail time. mail time. Let's go, chat. We're going in. Going into mail time. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's go. In. It's mail time. It's mail time. Two hundred and sixty-three hours, by the way. <laughs> I hear my childhood. <laughs> The instant I thought of this stream, the instant it was the... Uh, I, I also thought of... Simultaneously thought of Blue's Clues and the Mail Time song and all that good stuff. So, uh... <laughs> let's get into it, shall we? First and foremost, I've got, like, a million hats here. I kind of got to deal with this, right? I got to deal with this situation. That brought me nostalgic joy. Mail time, baby. It's mail time. It's mail time. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, so I gotta, so we gotta get prepared to open however much mail is out here, right? And the first order of business to do that is to empty this inventory, because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna need the coffee. We can get rid of that. I'm not gonna be watering anything. I mean, I could water. I guess I could water Timby. You know, it might not be a bad idea to hold on to that. We got a stone chest all ready to go in here. I might as well make use of it. We'll go ahead and get a second stone chest as well, I think, just for good measure, because I'm, I do think I'm going to need two chests at bare minimum for all, that's, all the stuff that we're going to get here. The hats need to be put in a dresser. I had the exact same thought. I can just go buy a dresser from Robbins, right? I know, I know, price of perfection, buying, what is this blasphemy? But it, I think it has to be done, right? It has to be done. We can, I can finally, now that the challenge has officially lifted, I can actually buy things 
for my own convenience instead of just because I, like, literally have to. I think we go and get a dresser from Robin's. I think that's first order of business. Go get a dresser from Robin. And a catalog. Uh, do I have enough for the catalog? It's like 300,000, right? I could buy the, the furniture catalog, but that would put me very low on funds. Of course, it, when I sell everything that I get from the mail, I might be totally rich. It's going to be interesting to see... Like, like, here's the thing. There's two ways you could approach this. There's one way, which is the speedy way, which is where I give you a... Uh, an, epile an epilepsy warning and just spam through all the mail at top speed and try and get through it as fast as possible. Then there's the, the way that I'm probably going to endeavor to go for myself, the more fun way, I think, the more datum-focused way, where uh, we, ch we count up the mail. We're going to count up the mail and see how it goes and, and just have a little fun with it. We're going to appreciate the mail for what it's worth exactly. You got it exactly right, Autumn. Haley wants to look her best for us. If only Haley could be here for the mail. I think Chloe's going to need moral support for all of this. She's going to need mail support. Moral mail support. Count it up. Don't worry. The infrastructure is in place. Oh, I can just like go in here, can't I? <laughs> I was, I, it's, it's like key to the town is what I was... I, like, I have the key to the town. I was waiting for it to open, but... All right, um... Let's see. Oak. I, I saw an oak dresser. Do we have any any other dressers, or is that the only only dresser I got here? Child bed. No, thank you. I guess we'll buy an oak dresser. Sure. Better better than no dresser at all. There are probably undoubtedly better dressers out there. The oak dresser has got to be the most basic vanilla dresser of all time. But it'll get the job done. The classic. Important decisions right here. Catalog is 30k, not 300k. I definitely thought it was, like, super expensive. Like, the catalog... If it's only 30k, that's very surprising to me. I, I distinctly remember being extremely floored by the amount of money that it cost. Which, I mean, I shouldn't be in, in reality. I, I guess dresser fits perfectly right here, huh? Let me just go ahead and pop all this stuff in. Pop, pop, pop. Yo, I was missing this my whole life. We got so many chests full of clothes here. <laughs> we can finally just consolidate this. All I'm, do I'm doing this. Forget the mail right now. Forget the mail. This is too satisfying. After do do ring can rings go in here as well? Rings can go in here. There's a ring tab and everything. Oh my god. This is the most satisfying moment of the Price of Perfection so far for me. So many random nonsense chests, finally. Finally, we just have one place to store everything. Amazing. Give me all of this, all of this. And I got a full, I got a, like a full, fully upgraded backpack too. So I don't even need to worry about like going and making multiple trips here. Just mul there's one trip per chest. This is so good. The dressers are very nice. They didn't always do this, did they? Weren't dressers back in the day just for decorative purposes? I swear this was not an actual functionality. Oh, there's all our garbage hats. Well, not all our garbage hats, I guess. There's still a bunch on the uh, on the sea urchins. But I swear there was a uh, there was no dresser functionality like this in like 1.3 and earlier. Feels like it's a it's a newer addition for sure. Now I have more chests for the mail gifts if I need them. I don't I don't know if I'm going to need three more chests in addition to the two I already made, but maybe I'm severely underestimating the amount of mail. Okay. Tim P. All right, he's all watered. We're good to go. So many trash hats. Whenever tailoring got added, I think that was 1.4. That sounds familiar. All right. Now that the stage is set, and the, and the mail's ready. I don't think we just go right to the mail. I think I want to save the day. I'm going to go to sleep. And then we'll start first thing tomorrow on this mail opening frenzy. Chloe's going to get so many paper cuts on her hands from the however many envelopes she's about to open. Tim, be my beloved. 
We get some Argon love for Timby. He's been alone for so long, and Krobus as well. What's your plan for the new year, Chloe? Oh, uh, well, gotta get caught up in the last century's worth of mail at first, and then we'll see where that leaves us, Krobus. Argon stalling real. All right, um, I'm gonna sleep. I'm gonna save the day now that the stage is set. I got my dresser, my inventory is clear. I don't think I need anything else to open mail. Sleep it up. Actually, I do need one other thing to open mail. Do you know what that thing is, chat? I need uh, a little something like this. Why count solely the mail when you can count how, how however much mail each individual person gives you? Does it make it slightly more complex on my end? Yeah, instead of uh, having one button to increment a counter for mail, I now have a sticky note on the, by the side of my monitor that has a legend of 18 different hotkeys to, <laughs> to increment each individual player's counter, or each individual character counter, each individual individual villager. So that's uh, something. <laughs> Argon conducting scientific research right now. This is so much cooler, though. All right. And also, for this uh, counter, any mail that comes that's like, uh, hey, we're getting ready for the Egg Festival or the Feast of the Winter Star is coming up, those ones we're not counting. We're only counting mail from villagers as like a personal endeavor. Otherwise, Lewis would steal the show on this one. Chloe mail outfit. I don't know if, do we have a mail outfit? Best day of life right here. I'm glad you're having fun. Do I have any? What, there's got to be like a male hat, right? The official cap? That's definitely a postman cap. That That's 100,000% a post a post a postworker's hat. We got to get a, a better shirt to match it, though. Little blue hoodie, maybe? Little blue hoodie? You know, it's kind of... it's It's got something to it. Got something to it. I'll, I'll rock it for a little while. We can always change it up. Little mail outfit. Here's the mail. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. All right. Um, I guess let's get started, shall we? I guess let's get started. Here we go. I don't know how this... It's going to be slow going at first, I imagine, because I'm going to be not used to the, uh, the hotkeys. All right, so... This is just, this is, the, this is perfect. Chat, this is perfect. This is the like first mail you receive in a year. So anytime we come back to this egg festival mail, we'll know that one year has passed. I don't know when this is from. Like, is this year 21 or is this year 20? Does anyone remember when we stopped checking mail and started just sleeping? I honestly don't remember the exact year. Almost my Stardew character look, that's awesome. Gonna get jump scared by the mail audio every, every once in a while, dear God. All right. Well, this is this is a great place to start. That's very serendipitous. But uh, Mayor Lewis, thank no, thank you. All right. That that one is is legitimately from Mayor Lewis. This is this is a counter to Mayor Lewis. Let me see if my counter it worked in testing. Did it uh, did that update for Mayor Lewis just now? What I just did. His his key his designated key is F one. Mayor Lewis is F1. It did It did seem to increment. I was just looking at my stream preview, which I should have been looking at the other preview because it's not delayed, but all right, we're good to go. How do I feel knowing that Stardew's mail service is more efficient than the USPS will ever be? <laughs> I've not had to deal with the USPS because I live in Canada, thankfully, but uh, all right. How much money is Mayor Lewis and how much money is Pierre going to send us for his, like, his rebate program or whatever it is? We have like literally haven't shopped at his store ever. Just about. All right, Clint, you're okay. So I think that's. I'm gonna. It's gonna take some getting used to. Clint, back to back, sending us the iron and gold bars, respectively. I appreciate it. Robin with the 50 wood. Oh, I forgot that she sends like a whole 50 wood. That's gonna add up real fast. <laughs> Robin is F7. F7's in chat. For Robin. All right. Um. There's 18 freaking keys to remember. This is this is crazy. <laughs> Pierre is gonna be broke. All right, Emily is four. Not four years old. Is it's the same exact letter in the mail? Yo, who's chat? Who do you think is gonna have sent the most mail by the time everything is said and done here? That's the flower dance. We don't worry about that. Marnie. Okay, that is gonna be 
I'll, I'll, I'll start memorizing these eventually. Where's Marnie on this on this little thing? All right, there we go. Robin, I like you, but this is the worst gift ever. 50 wood? You know, it adds up over 100 years, probably. Pam, first piece from Pam. Your guess is Emily. Louis, Pierre. Gold counter looks like a good idea. Sounds like a good idea. I would have set up the gold counter if I had the wherewithal to do so, but we're just going to have to math it out at the end of it. It'll be easy enough. We just go back to, like, the start of the mail grind. And, uh, that's Pierre, by the way. 560. Well, I guess mathing it out for Pierre and Louis individually won't be so easy. But, uh, that's fine. Mailbox has some underground storage or something. Alright, Luau, we're already into in deep into summer here. Gus, you're gonna be a, a fat seven. Gus is a lurker, confirm. Alright, George, that's six. It's alphabetical. It's gonna take some getting used to. Gonna take some getting used to, chat. You gotta bear with me. Kent, the mega bomb, mail bombs. Another one from Gus. Gus sends so many different things in the mail. He's gonna be a big contributor to the uh to the inventory clogging problem. How many how many freaking pizzas and pepper poppers has Shane stolen from Joe Jamar? We're gonna find out <laughs> over the next however long this is gonna take. I'm excited. I'm very excited. In a roundabout way. It's obviously not the most enthralling content. But it is, uh, there is something very satisfying about it. There's Shane again, that's F9. Sandy, I think she's F8. I love the, I love the unique stationery from Sandy. I think that's gonna be a nice, uh, a nice break in the monotony. Get some Argon Cactus spam in chat as well, by the way. Long time lurker, first time live stream. Welcome, uh, Valued Muscle. Thank you, thank you. Five thousand, five thousand dollars worth? I think it's gonna be more than that, Zaniela. If I had to, if I had to wager. If I were a betting man. Yeah, so once I get into the rhythm of this, it's gonna be that's Demetrius, so but that's the Moonlight Jelly, so. Gus coming in again. He's making sure we're not dying. He, he was trying to make sure we didn't die while we slept for a hundred years, I think. More unique stationery from the wizard. Appreciate it. Let me know if I miss any, by the way. Like if I miss a miss a hotkey or accidentally mispress a hotkey or something like that. Because I'm not keeping the greatest track of that. Um, this is the Stardew Valley Fair. Okay, we're going to be getting a lot of that. A lot of festivals to get caught up on. Miss these streams? Me too, Emmy. Me too. Yeah, but once I get into a good rhythm here and start memorizing the uh, the key combinations and everything a little bit better, um, I think it'll be a nice sort of Q&A stream. Feel free to, like, ask me whatever, or we can... We're going to have a lot of conversation to fill here. Mark my words, so we can't just be talking about the the mail every single day. All right, this is oh, this is the Stardew Valley Fair again. And we got a lot of mail in that one week between the fair notice and the and the fair itself. So much cactus fruit. <laughs> Ironically, we're going to have like so much cactus fruit. You're absolutely correct about that. Clint is kind of take like stealing the show so far, isn't he? I'm not looking at the numbers exactly, but I feel like I've gotten a lot of mail from Clint so far. Uh Lewis F1 F1 Formula Racer. Argon on the big TV while I work on a craft project. Life is good. I'm happy to oblige. Happy to oblige you, Koji. Little F8 for Sandy. Any plans for more streams? Uh, definitely. I've got, I mean, I've got more Stardew streams lined up. I don't want to just do uh, price perfection post content, like post challenge content 100%, but I've got a lot of ideas for that as well, as well as for many other things and also some non stardew stuff i'm excited i've been i've been working in the background not as much as i would have liked i'm not gonna lie uh festival of ice it's fine not as much as i would have liked to be working i've been a little bit uh i mean procrastinating is technically probably the right word but also doesn't feel like the right word because it's more that depression has kind of been kicking my butt it's this weird state, right, where I'm like, uh, after the Price of Perfection ended, that was such a... Yo, back-to-back -back battery packs, though. It was such a staple in my life that, um... Triple back-to-back -back battery packs. This is the first one from Evelyn as well, I think. That, like, once it was gone, I felt, like, so lost. And I feel like I've seen a lot of that in the community as well. I was like, I don't know what to do without these streams. And I'm like, yo, me too. <laughs> Same here, homie. 
Well, my secret friend was... Oh, I missed it. <laughs> we'll never know. It's okay. I accidentally just pressed the button to skip past the mail. All right, um... Chloe's mailbox gotta be huge. Mailbox gotta be huge to hold all this. You're not wrong. It's it's literally like a like a bag of holding, a mailbox of holding. My secret friend Clint. Okay. Well, didn't know, didn't miss anything on that one. <laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be many different winter stars where we miss like Haley or something, and that's gonna be somewhat upsetting. Sandy is F8. Wishing you the best. Thank you. Like, I've, I've struggled with the... Uh, not not to get too real on you here, but I've, I have struggled with depression for basically most of my life. Um, but it's gotten easier. And I think with you guys, honestly, like, on streaming and doing something I, I love this much, it has gotten significantly easier. Which is why I want to do it more. Like, I, I haven't... All right, next year's, next year's on, by the way. We've gone through officially one whole year of mail, only... Uh, like 80 or so to go, 90 something. <laughs> I don't even know. It's not literally 100 years, so. Uh, Evelyn is gonna be number five. Yeah, I've struggled with depression for most of my life, but it's uh, but finding something that I love as much as I love streaming and making content and stuff has definitely made a huge dent in my ability to cope with it. I will say, some NPCs here are definitely more common than others. I don't know if there's any actual math to that, or if it's all going to even out by the end of things here. Uh, that is an actual Mayor Lewis one. Gotta be on the lookout for those. Gorgeous six. Lewis always sends 500 to be able to calculate based on his number, then the rest of the money, the rest of the new money would be from Pierre. That's true, that's true, YS. That's some clever mathematical thinking right there. Lewis does send a consistent 500, whereas Pierre is the amount of money he sends is uh, variable. My friend Gus, Gus seven. Gus is a lurker. That's how I'm gonna have to remember it. I'm gonna end up m making like mnemonics for every single hotkey that I have to press for every character here. Gus is a lurker. That's a, that's gonna be the first one. Lurker Gus. Uh, Lewis is an F1 formula driver. Formula. He's definitely not an F1 formula race car driver. <laughs> Could you imagine Lewis behind the behind the wheel of a machine going 200 miles per hour? I don't think so. Man can't even move his truck out of his driveway for a single day of the year. I can't believe you have the patience for this. Absolutely incredible. Hello, June, by the way. I mean, is it any surprise really at this point how much patience I have? I would have hoped that just completing the Price Perfection Challenge on this cursed seed was uh, was demonstration enough of my patience, but this is this is a different level, I will say. This is a different level of patience, a different kind of patience. Chloe's dad sends money too. He only sends money the one time. My Chloe's dad does not send uh, money consistently. It's a one-time event, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, Clint is going to be... Number two. Clint is not, cl the hockey for Clint is number two because in everything he does in life, Clint can never come in first place. He's that's just that's just how that's just Clint's lot in life. He's always second best at best. It's an easy way to remember that. Party Valley Fair back into fall. Okay. I did find it strange that Jody has yet to send mail. Let's let's check our friendship with Jody. Did I accidentally make Jody mad or something? No, she's been I mean, she's been at full heart. There she is. All right, speak of the devil and she shall appear. No offense, Jody. Jody is number eight. Lucky number eight. Poor Clint. <laughs> Jody is a bit of a snake. She must have heard you. Exclamation point, Jody. That's not a real command, but maybe it should be. Um, Marnie is a little F three. F3 because she always sends 30 hay, so the, the 3, but actual 3 is Demetrius, so Marnie is F3. Double digits. Please no spam as well. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, all right, Mayor Lewis with the F1. The F1 proceeds. Caroline is number 1. Caroline confirmed best character in Stardew Valley. Because she's number 1. She's my number 1 hotkey. 
Or cactus fruit, by the way. She took two years to send you fertilizer. She was busy with her own stuff, I'm sure. Jody's a very busy woman. She's got a, uh... She's got a lot on her plate, honestly. Lots of lentil soup on her plate. Chat, have you ever thought about how, like, a... Uh, a plate is just a bowl, a bowl that's been flattened out? Like, I, I remember watching a Vsauce video forever ago about, like, how many holes are in things or something, and he was, like, making the argument that, like, a bo does a bowl have a hole in it because it's, like, a con a concave structure? And then he's like, well, how much do you have to flatten the bowl for it not to have a hole anymore? And it, like, turns into a plate, and it's like, oh my gosh. Mind blown in the weirdest way possible. All right, Pierre's little F6 action. Got to focus it down a little bit. I'm going to try and divide my attention as much as I can between doing this and chat, but no promises. Evelyn is the best. Get out of here, you meep. Evelyn has kicked her Joja Cola addiction, so I'm very happy for her in that regard. But calling her the best is uh, maybe a little much. What's weirder, a glass of beer through the mail or bombs through the mail? A thousand percent bombs in the mail. Literally illegal. <laughs> but not in Pelican Town. Alright, um... And thank God for that, because... Getting bombs through the mail is kind of, like, an easy way to get bombs if you don't want to buy them. Not the most reliable, but it is easy. Hey, there's a poor. Welcome, welcome. Lewis is a little F1. Special friend this year is we'll we'll see in a in a couple more pieces. All right, F three for Marnie, F eight for Sandy. Sandy sending a lot of mail. She must be really lonely out in that desert. I kind of feel bad about that. Uh, it was Clint two years in a row, bruh. <laughs> Awful. Sandy again with the cactus fruit every single time. She was she was really trying to lure me out to the desert with all that cactus fruit, wasn't she? How long before our inventory fills up, by the way? Like, before we actually have a, an entirely 100% full inventory? Place your bets now. Uh, Gus is 7. Gus is a lurker. Evelyn is 4. No, Evelyn's 5. Emily is 4. Caroline is 1. Clint is number 2, because we got him twice in a row at the Feast of the Winter Star. Pierre is uh, a rat, but he's also F6. There's Clint again. Oh, inventory full. Speak of the devil. Okay. Um, well, we're gonna have to empty empty things out here. First trip to the to the chests. I guess I can just do like. Uh, wait, can't I? Isn't there a button to add like everything from your inventory into a chest, or is that not a thing? That's organized. That's add to existing stacks. Yeah. So maybe maybe not actually. All right. First. There we go. Also, my my copper bar. Why don't I have my magnet rings on? I should probably get those, huh? I'm gonna go get the, the magnetism ring so I don't have to, like, walk around the mailbox if that happens again. Quality of life upgrade real quick. You forgot how many bars Clint sends. Alright, uh, quick little combined ring. Is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. Poor Clint didn't get a gift two years in a row. There's going to be a lot of people who are upset with uh, with Chloe from the, for the Feast of the Winter Star shenanigans. Many people who have not gotten gifts. OMG the drip. She's got her little post. She's it's, it's, it's I call this uh, new fashion line Postal Casual. This is Postal Casual. It's like Casual Friday for a postal worker. All right, back to work here. Gus, two days in a row. Give me some give me some pancakes. <laughs> All this food is going to be so old. Oh my gosh. Evelyn is five, because Emily is four. Uh, and we've, we've made it through another year, chat. Happy New Year to you. Pelican Town has no law enforcement. True. Very true. Closest thing they have is Marlin, and he just literally stays in his house. All the time. Ew, mold. Mold is very nasty. 
I started watching at the very beginning of last year, but I missed the last few months. Can't believe I finally made it. Congrats. Thank you, GGG. GG to you as well for, uh, for, for life, I guess. Chloe, local farmer finds century-old food in mailbox. All right, literally century eggs, but no, but no eggs. Pierre is F seven, or is he? He's F six. Robin's F seven. Okay. Wizard is the last one. He's F ten. All right. Pam is F five. Easy enough. Marnie's F three. Gonna start start remembering these uh, more fastly and more furiously. My little preview window of how many people have sent mail is like so small that I can't even tell the numbers. Chat, who's the most right now? It looks like it's probably Clint. I think he's the only one that's in double digits right now. Oh, there's Jody again. I think that's her second piece of mail literally ever. What's her what's her hotkey here? She's eight. Okay. Clint. Clint is is the top one, yeah. We'll see if that trend carries carries forward. He's just so lonely, he has nothing to do except to send mail, apparently. Uh, Demetrius, you're three, right? Yeah. When I first made this script for, uh... Like, I first wrote this little auto-hotkey script in order to do this. Gus is a lurker. I had the hotkeys on the numpad instead of, like, on the, like, the row of numbers, whatever you call that. And it was a lot more cumbersome. I changed... That's three in a row from Gus, by the way. And Linus? Oh, I feel like Linus never sends anything either. It was a lot more cumbersome to go, like, move my hand over to the numpad every single time, because my hand otherwise is resting on, like, W, A, S, D, and E. Robin is F7? Yeah. Jody, please, two males and both is fertilizer. <laughs> She's just getting... We got a long way to go, chat. We still have many, many years ahead of us. Don't get it twisted. Jody, Jody will make a comeback for sure. For sure. I believe in Jody. She, I think she's going to surprise us all at the end of all things here. Here's a little F6. Now it's a three-way tie. Yo, Sandy getting up there. Look at that. All right, Marnie's F3. So much hay. So, so much stone from George as well. George is what? Uh, six? Yeah. Tim Beeb also waiting very patiently. <laughs> He's, he, oh, there's Jody again. She got we got more retaining soil from her, um, or some retaining soil from her. Tim Beeb, he just wants to play. Like, look at this guy. Quick staring contest with Tim Beeb. He wins every single time. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how that dog is so good at staring contests. Team Sandy, hashtag Team Sandy. Are we dividing the chat into different into eighteen different teams right now? Who do you think is if if chat chat if if you were divided into eighteen different teams, in theory based on like which one of these characters on your stream right now you think is the most likely to send the most mail, who would have the least members on their team? I.e., who is the who's going to send the least mail? You might be tempted to say someone like Jody because she's uh, she's been slow on the uptake, but maybe I don't know maybe something else plays into it here. Maybe, maybe your preferences, maybe their personalities play into it. Uh, Shane's a little F9 action. Linus, the wizard. Sandy, look at her, look at Sandy go. Sandy is on a, she's on like a freak, she's on a roll. Look at this girl go. Sending me coconuts and Tom Ka soup. Jody coming back in, coming back in here. I feel like Jody can't be the, can't be in last place anymore, right? I feel like Linus might be in last place. All right, uh, Demetrius. Little three. Yeah, there we go. I'm Teen Shane. His gifts are my favorites. Shane does send very good, very good gifts. I will give him that. Like the pepper poppers, especially, because they don't they give you like a speed buff, something like that. Robin with the wood, though. And then Pam is a little F5. I will I will mention no one is F4 because the I have a command as well, or like a hotkey combination that um well, n number one, I should say that if you press F4 in the game, it just does this. It goes, to, it goes into screenshot mode, deactivates your HUD and everything. So I didn't, I want to avoid uh, messing with that. Um, but also, the key combination to to like remove one from someone's counter in case I accidentally like put one in the wrong place or something, or double tap to cocky or something like that, is uh, 
is alt plus the hotkey. And I've heard word on the grapevine is that alt F4 is not the greatest combination to, to map something to. I don't think you should be mapping alt F4 to anything other than its intended purpose because <laughs> I think you'll, you might have some problems if you, if you try to do that. Marnie with the F3. Uh, Kent is just 9, not F9. Wizard F10, though. Secret friend, we'll find out in a second. Linus coming back with some, some large mouth basses. Pam sending me so much beer, she's really trying to kick the habit, I think. Just, just offloading all her beer on me. Um, Evelyn is a little 5. Okay. Hey there, Karita. Welcome, welcome. You said you're a, you say you're a little late. I say we've only gone through like 3 years of mail so far, so... You're right on time. <laughs> Good idea, Lana. What Lana say, or Ayana? Uh, would you consider saving every 200 mails or so? Are you worried that I'm going to crash the game? We got Clint three years in a row for the Feast of the Winter Star? Are you actually... <laughs> Poor Clint. Oh, no. Does it give me the same person every year to, like, give them a gift? Or is this, like, literally random? That's so funny. <laughs> Poor Clint. F's in chat for Clint. That's so that's so sad. <laughs> he got no gift three years in a row. Oh no, poor guy. Alright, Robin is F6, I think. F7, my bad. Uh there's Shane with the F9. I actually feel sorry for Clint now. How how many how many feasts of the winter stars do you have to miss for people to feel bad for Clint? Apparently the answer is three. Who would have thought? If it's four in a row, I'm going to be so... I'm going to laugh my, my butt off, I'm not going to lie. Alright, uh, F7. I feel like, uh, Ayana, that, that idea about saving every so often with the mail is probably good, though. Just in case something goes wrong and, like... Like, Stardew's not prone to crashing or anything like that. But it is, uh... Better safe than sorry, right? F8. Caroline, haven't seen you in a hot minute. Uh, Pam is F5. How can I remember Pam is F5? Pam is F5 because I skipped F4, just like Pam skips town in her bus. Or, isn't there that, there's like a glitch too, where, where Pam can just like disappear from the game entirely. Alright, there's another year done and dusted. I think that's a good spot to, to save, to save the game as per the, the Ayana principle. All right, quickly add... Well, I guess I can just do this, right? And then put everything that's not in there into here. Good stuff. You like the different stationery? Me too. You take back your previous Clint slander. Sardew doesn't crash except when you absolutely need it not to. Also, we are in year 112. Keep that in mind, exclamation point year. That, uh, like, no one's... No one's ventured these frontiers, or at least not many people have, so I don't know if that's gonna mess with the stability of the game whatsoever, but let's save let's save this one. That's officially three years, I think, of uh or is that only two years? Chat, was that two or three years? Was that two or three years of mail? Currently leading the leading the scoreboard is Sandy with fifteen pieces of mail. Gus and Pam not far behind at fourteen each. Who is who's doing the worst here? Who's doing the worst? We got we got kind of a tie in the back for for worst. Like Linus, Emily, Evelyn, George. Oh no, Jody's at four. Never mind. <laughs> Jody. Oh, I did. I thought it was, I thought six was the lowest. Then I looked down there and see Jody. All right. Chloe mailman outfit. This is this is Chloe's mailman outfit. You love you gotta love the official cap. I don't know, the blue hoodie was kind of a spontaneous decision, but I think it kind of works. Once as I try to be civilized, I get the urge to be mischievous sometimes. You do you, Krobus. You do you. Look, a little coffee, a little pick-me-up for Chloe here. Let's go, I'm sticking with Pam. Feel like I'm watching a horse race? It does have that kind of vibe, doesn't it? Oh, it's raining. You know what they say, though. The rain won't stop the mayo. All right. Let's get back to it. Uh, Demetrius. Demetrius is a hot three hotkey, right? Oops. Alright. 
Marnie is... What was Marnie? She's like F3, right? Yeah, because of the 30. There we go. Mischievous Krobus is great. Absolutely true. Clint, such a good guy, by the way. Clint, sending us so much... Uh, so many bars, even when we literally haven't, didn't give him a gift three years in a row at the Feast of the Winter Star. Hello, Jody. Nice to see you. Did you actually put together a male-themed soundboard? Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Does that answer your question? I mean, it's only it's it's, it's literally only two things. It's that and uh, rain won't stop the mayo. Those are the only two that I had time to put on the soundboard, but I felt like it was a fun addition. So, two guesses for where I got the idea for for a soundboard from. All right, um, incredible. <laughs> What have you done? I'm just having fun with it, man. You gotta... This is... this is. It's a little, uh, like, cheat code to improve your patience is to just, like, find ways to distract and amuse yourself when you're doing... when you're doing or preparing to do something as monotonous as this. Like, I definitely could have set up, a uh, some kind of auto-clicker to just, like, click, 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 click all the way through the mail, and then we could go through, like, all the goods that we got from the mail and um and probably extrapolate from those results how much uh how much each villager sent us that way but i think this is this is a more organic process this is a more natural process i already automated the process of sleeping well i didn't automate it that was uh charlo j automated it the process of sleeping until year 111 so um now I'm just paying my penance. This is my... This is the punishment that I reap for not having actually done that manually. Evelyn is five. Okay. Last day of Pride Month. So true, but uh, Pride is eternal. Rainbows in chat, please. All right. Um, Eight for Jody. Stock message, Chloe. Enjoy. He's sending me so much money. I... <laughs> Pierre's literally gonna go bankrupt specifically from spending or from sending money to Chloe here. All right, um, F six for Pierre, right? Yeah. Hey there, Chago J. I was just talking about you. Maybe you were lurking, and maybe you heard. When did I buy the backpack upgrade? That was last episode, the first um, like post episode of the Price of Perfection, where I did Factor's Challenge and all that. I also did a few things after I spoiler alert beat beat Factor's Challenge. And one of those things was to buy the backpack upgrade because the people were so ravenous for it. And honestly, I can't blame them. I could have gone the whole distance, I'm sure. I, I'd gotten so used to not having any backpack space that I was totally fine just, like, leaving it unupgraded. Un but for things like this and uh, potentially future grinds as well, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I think having the extra backpack space is going to be pretty nice. My friend Gus, thank you. My friend Robin. Oops, I accidentally I I, I missed tap. That was that was Pam, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little Alt. Wait, does chat does Alt F5 do anything? <laughs> I'm a little scared now. Alt F5. Did I just uh, leak my IP address? Uh, but that was supposed to be for Robin. That's F7. Joined right as you were being mentioned. Right on. Have a good one there, Autumn. Thanks for tuning in for a little bit. Appreciate it. All right. Um, F6 is Pierre. Gus Lurkin. October is also Pride Month. Is that true? I mean, there's no reason not to be prideful every month. As far as I'm concerned. But it is cool to have, like, a, like a dedicated time specifically to that, because obviously... Recognizing those marginalized groups is super important. Uh, Pierre is a little F6. He's the winner star. I swear, if, if we get Clint four years in a row... Chat, did we get? Do you think we got Clint again for this Feast of the Winter Star, or did we finally break the trend? Did, Lu did Mayor Luce finally realize? I'm, I feel so bad. I've given Cl Clint to Chloe three years in a row, and she literally hasn't stepped out of her house for a single day. And he finally decided to give Clint to Clint's name to somebody else. 
We're about to find out pretty soon here. There's Clint. Just, just you know. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, there's no way. There has to be, there has to be, like, some logic in place that says, if you didn't give this person your gift last year, then you have to, then you get the same person again the next year. There's no way. It's, I bet it's a bug that tells you it's just the person from this year. Do you, th that could be it. Chat, that could, dawn time, that might actually be, like, true facts. There's no shot that we got Clint four years in a row. I mean, if we did, that's amazing. But I think that's possibly more likely. Clint moment. <laughs> it might, yeah, it might just be listing the current year's seeker friend. Yo, is that a, is that a secret speed run strategy? Is to save the save the mail from the feast of the winter star until the next year, until like the year's rolled over, and then check it so you know who you have without having to check the mail again in the future. Secret speedrun strategies activate. All right, Kent. Uh, that's nine. I'm pretty sure. Robin is a little F7. That makes sense because the letter updates your collections every year. I guess, okay, yeah, that, that does make sense. That tracks, too. I guess we're just going to have to get used to seeing Clint's name all over the place. <laughs> Literally just just every single year. I just I do like to imagine that even though it's probably, uh, that probably is the case, that we're just getting it because Clint is our secret gift, our secret friend this year. Um... I like to imagine that he literally was our secret friend every single year while we were asleep. Because if anyone was going to get that bad of luck and be like that depressed from not getting a gift for over for like a hundred years in a row, you know what would happen to Clint. New Year, by the way. New Year, New Egg Festival. It would a hundred thousand percent be Clint. There's no other person in Stardew Valley that could even come close to his level of uh, of sadness. And it just feeds into itself. It just It's just constantly feeding into itself. In so many different weird, unexpected ways. Did I see the Cuphead DLC? I'm gonna be honest with you, Snatcher. I still haven't even played Cuphead the non-DLC. I own it. I own the game. And every time I log into Steam, it's like, here are some games in your collection that you haven't played yet that uh, gamers like you tend to enjoy. And... 100% of the time, Cuphead is the top of that list. One day I will do it. Probably on stream at this rate. Especially now that I've mentioned it, but I've, I've yet to play Cuphead. I am fully and uh, adroitly aware... Sandy's F8, yeah. That the Cuphead DLC came out today, I'm pretty sure, after a very long time waiting for it. So, Cuphead enjoyers rejoice. Uh, the main reason that I know that is because my favorite streamer, Dan Giesling, has been uh, chomping at the bit to play the Cuphead DLC, but he doesn't want to play it until he's finished with Elden Ring. So he has to beat Melania, and he's like at 2,700 attempts to beat her right now, and climbing, so good luck to him. He'll get there eventually. Alright, Emily is a little four hotkey. There we go. Who did we gift the year Marnie, Marnie finally came in clutch? I literally don't remember, Maggie. I was so pog blind from the uh, from from receiving the egg that I didn't even. I mean, we can go back and check the tapes and see who I gave the gift to. I, one thing I do remember is that uh, the year before we got Marnie, we got Haley, which was kind of serendipitous in its own right. Haley, it, it just goes to show, Haley portends all great things. It was her garbage can that gave us the cactus fruit finally, and she was right there just before it when we uh, when we got the egg from Marnie as well. It's like Haley can feel our appreciation for her through the game code, and she's responding in kind. She's trying to send us whatever weird coded message that she can. It was Robin. It was Robin. Okay. I mean, oh, fair enough. Kudos to Robin, then. Evelyn, five. Just checked. It was Jody. Imagine if it hadn't Jody, though. She's not repaying us very kindly if it was. 
Little Linus with the with the fried calamari. How the heck does Linus get fried calamari? Do you think that he cooked it himself, or that, uh, or is that one he dug out of the saloon's trash? Because like I fully believe that Linus could cook a squid, for the record. But there's more to cook. There's more to making calamari, fried calamari especially, than just like cooking it on an open fire. Don't you need an actual deep fryer for that? Or do I misunderstand the definition of the word fried? He saved it from the trash. He is the trash man. Yeah, that sounds that sounds more like my boy Linus right there. For sure. Evelyn, that's gonna be five. I am starting to get the hang of these uh these hockeys without having to glance at my legend on the side of my monitor every single time. That's very nice. Emily is four, right? Yeah. Emily's still not that common, so. Pierre is F6, I'm pretty sure. What is F6? Chat, what is F6? Like, the F key is on the keyboard, right? Every, everyone knows Alt F4. But what do the other F keys, like, even do most of the time? Like, there's got to be key combinations that uh, they're used for in some weird, roundabout, specific circumstances. But the only one I know is, like, Alt F4. I know you can press F12 in Steam for a screenshot, and that's kind of it. I don't know any other F key shortcuts. I feel like I very rarely have ever pressed the F key prior to literally today when I'm doing it <laughs> just about every other second. My secret friend. Yo, did we, got, we, not, we got no mail from our friends between Night Market announcement and uh, Winter Star announcement there. It's kind of wild. All right, Pam with the F5. F11 for full screen, that's true, I forgot about that one. F11 for full screen is a good, uh, a good one to keep in your back pocket. F7 for Robin. My secret friend Clint, it's gotta be. It's, it's, it's definitely just Clint five years in a row, there's no way. There's no way, exclamation point Clint, not a real command. F1 is help. Where does the help come from? Like, how do they know what you need help with if you press F- if you just press F1? Or is it like you press F1, and then, uh, three to five business days later, you get a knock on your door from, uh, from a Microsoft employee, assuming you're running Windows? Wouldn't that be wild? Alright, um, Clint is two, obviously. Shane with the F9, I love this song, by the way. Cannot get enough of it. All right, new year, new me. Do we own a horse yet? We're waiting until we marry Haley in order to get a horse. Because she wants a pony. All right, I'm going to take a moment to... Take a moment to save the game real quick, now that we've gone through another full year. Go to sleep for the night. And then we head, uh, we head back to mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. I can't I can't give I can't go to, I can't go the full distance every single time. But a little mail time. A little a little mail time every now and again definitely bolsters the spirits. The help key is just screaming into the void. When you press F1, the window Windows usually gives you an unhelpful window explaining how to use the current program. So if I press F1 now, well if I pressed it now it would uh, give more mail to Lewis or have more mail be received from Lewis. Demetrius is 3, right? Yeah. But if I pressed it while I was running Stardew Valley, would it open like a game facts tutorial window? I don't understand. It must only be for Windows specific programs, I guess. Yo, Jody, almost back to back mail right there. Un like unprecedented, never before seen amounts of mail from Jody. Is a mod being created to allow you to keep Krobus as a roommate and still marry Haley? I plead the fifth, but you know, probably not. I, I will say, my plan for the whole Haley situation, to marry Haley, uh, there are no mods involved. Not mods from, like, not mods as in, like, uh, like June and and all the lovely mods who handle things in, like, the Discord and the, and the stream chat, but mods as in modifications to the game. None of that. 
There's none of that currently involved in my plans for, for the Haley situation. Exclamation point Haley, by the way. Chrome uses it. Chrome uses the F1 help button. I really do miss the days, for the record, of, uh, what was that guy's name? The paperclip? Anyone know what I'm talking about? Like the Microsoft paperclip, where you'd open Microsoft Word, and you'd have that little paperclip guy? He had a name. And he would, he would always pop up and say, hey, I see you're trying to spell uh, oubliette. Do you need a little help with that? And he'd give you the bullet points. Clippy? Was his name just literally Clippy? That's so good. A lot of wood from Robin this uh, past month here. Love to see it. Sandy's F8. Clippy? Microsoft Clippy? Am I dating myself by mentioning Clippy? I mean, apparently not, because most people seem to seem to recognize him. But I feel like he's probably been memed and talked about in like videos and stuff. How many of you... Give me a thumbs up in chat if you ever had first-hand experience with Clippy, the Microsoft Paperclip. Thumbs down if you only know of Clippy anecdotally. Sincerely, Mr. Lewis, by the way. Mr. Lewis. Lewis, I've got 10 hearts with you. Can you not just, like, use your name like a normal person? You gotta call yourself Mr. Lewis every single time. Uh, F6 for Pierre. It's called the Companion Cube. Yo, we do have- we have a lot of Clippy stands in chat. A lot of Clippy stands? Clippy was, like, pretty based, honestly. I don't know if I ever had him on my home computer. Or if I ever had any experience with him on my home computer at the very least, but I des I distinctly remember being acquainted with Clippy in uh in school on the school computers. Jody, thank you. The rare Jody sighting. Yo, Tim Beeb, look at the, the action shot of Tim Beeb running. I love it. He's running. He's trying to catch up with us. He's trying. He, maybe there's something in the mail he doesn't want us to get, and he's trying to catch us in time before we open it. You gotta hurry, Tim Beeb. You gotta hurry. We're opening mail at a rapid, rapid clip here. Oh, he's like, never mind. He's like, never mind. I see you're in the middle of uh, mail time. So he's not gonna bother us. Appreciate it, Tim Beeb. Appreciate you. You prefer bonsai, buddy? Isn't that a virus? That's the purple monkey, right? Demetrius with a little three. And with a little F5. Opening mail at a rapid clippy. Alright, your friend Gus is a lurker, so here we go. Evelyn is five, right? I feel Yo, pickle jar rag! First mail from Haley about to about to come in to the tune of this song. The search dog was a whole animated golden retriever. I do not remember this search dog. What I do remember is having, uh... There, there was a game, I think it's literally just, like, Pets with a Z. But it was, like, uh... Like, there's probably been many incarnations of it over the years. But the one that I remember was on, like, an actual CD-ROM from, like, the 90s. And it would go, it would be on my computer, and there were, like, three different cats to choose from. And I remember having a blast with that game. I loved, I loved cats even as a, as a young'un. Maybe even more than I do now. I love a, a specific cat, my little my little Manu kitty. I love her more now, but just in general, I was I was kind of a cat fiend as a kid. Little treat from Gus from Gustopher. Cats with a Z. It was so good, right? Did I ever figure out what that purple bag in the cave game was? I did not. Draconic Moon or Dragonic Moon. Dragonic Moon, yeah. I was recommended to, like, go to the, um, like, a Flash Games subreddit or a Flash Games Discord and ask about it there, which I never did. So maybe that would help out, like, to, to... I don't know if it was a Flash game, though, is the thing. I, I, I thought it was, like, a CD-ROM game, for sure. Jody, by the way. A little 8 from Jody. Amazing how quickly my uh, my brain internalized these hotkeys already. Most of them, anyway. I'm gonna start going through these at a rapid clip. Robin, I still have to look every so often. R slash tip of my joystick is really good at finding games you only have vague memories of. Interesting. I might have to check that out to Zenny. 
I would also go to the game aisle in Walmart and play Nintendogs on their sample DSs. Do they still have those, like, sample game consoles? Where you can go into, like, a Best Buy or a, or a Future Shop or something? Also, is Future Shop still even a thing? Uh, and, um... And they'd have, like, it, the whatever the newest, the latest game console is in, like, a glass dome that you can just play for a little bit. I love those things, dude. I don't know if I've ever actually interacted with one, but I, I distinctly remember thinking they were extremely cool. They 100% do, and I don't think so. The dichotomy of chat. They have Switches and stuff out, but Switches are, like, so old now. Do you think Nintendo's gonna announce their a new, uh, a new games console soon? Like, they announced the the Switch OLED not that long ago, but that's just, like, a, a new, bigger screen, right? Basically, that's, and that's, like, basically it. One of those things where if I didn't already own a Switch, I probably would have bought the OLED model. But because I do already own a Switch, I'm not going to buy another one just for that. New Switch Pro 2 XL. So much mail, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet, Zellaby. We're still, we're still deep in the thicket of... Mail time. So it's, uh, we got a long way to go. Six for George. They said they wanted the Switch to last 10 years, really. I mean, that's an admirable thing, honestly, if they want to, like, uh, like ride, ride one console for that long. Because it does get draining when, like, a console comes out, like, every just couple years, and you gotta, like, if you want to stay on the cutting edge of, of gaming... And you have to shell out like a few hundred dollars every single time. Not a sustainable practice for me personally. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it works great for the game companies though. All right, um, F7 for Robin. It would take them more than a few years to do it to make a new console. I mean, they've, the Switch has been out for a while, hasn't it? I don't know when the Switch actually came out, but uh, F9 for Shane. Hey, Zella B, thank you for being a member for the past three months at the Positron level, no less. Get some Argon love in chat for Zella B. Take my money, yes, yes, even though I'm a hardcore lurker. I, I've been loving these streams. Thank you for doing the thing. My my pleasure, Zella. For Zella. However it may be pronounced. I appreciate you appreciating me, appreciating you. Thank you, thank you for being here, lurker or otherwise. And get some sevens from my lurkers in chat, including including Gus. Lurkers are the lifeblood of the stream. I, I say it pretty much every time. Yo, that was Evelyn George, Evelyn George. Ba like, back to back to back to back. That was kind of cute. Who do we got? I got it right the first time. Zellaby, good to know. Ed, Tristan, Zellaby, Cobalt Cryptid, Jesse, Anthony... Arita Hearts, Aqua, Taiga, Madeline, Madeline with the 07 sneaking in there, Pelinar, Tweety, Tiny, Epsilon Aphrodite, Laney with the 3.5, thank you, thank you very much, Xantical, uh, Mid Midnight, is that how you say that, Midnight? Either way, that's, that, that, that's, that's one that's gonna stump me, that, the pronunciation of that one, either way, thank you for the lurking. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate the active chatters as well. What are you doing while you're lurking, though? Are you, um, are you exercising? Are you doing the dishes? Are you perhaps gaming yourself? Playing the new Cuphead DLC that came out? Playing a little Elden Ring, potentially? Playing Stardew Valley yourself? You could be doing many different things, playing many different games. You could be working on something. To be like working from, from home or even potentially working from work if your company allows for you to listen to what is essentially a weird podcast right now. Either way, keep doing what you do. Do what you do in the meantime, non-stop. Playing Harvest Moon, heck yeah. Working on an art project, nice. Petting my cat and routing a Stardew speedrun. What kind of speedrun, Madeline? That sounds exciting. Is it a uh, is it an existing speedrun or is it one of your own divination? 
Shane with more stolen goods from Joja Mart. He's Shane literally bankrupted Joja Mart by stealing all these uh, Epper Poppers and frozen pizzas to send my way. Single-handedly ran Joja Mart into the ground, one pizza at a time. Caroline with the potato. Playing Death Stranding. I haven't heard of Death Stranding in a while. I forgot that was a game. A worthy sacrifice. A secret friend. If I go to, like, the page here... Okay, it still says Clint even on this mail, so it's, uh... It's gotta be. I mean, that's the, that's the only explanation. There's no way you got Clint, like, six years in a row, if that's what this even is. Unfortunately, it's a Joja movie theater route. Multiplayer, though. Interesting. Best of luck with your... With your run routing. Inventory full. Quickly deposit everything here. Deposit everything here. Yo, we got some new stuff. Actually, the wood is not new. We just have 999 wood already in the one chest. Catfish is new, though. Thank you, Linus, for that. Chat, th thumbs up in chat if you've ever actually sat down and, like, watched the Stardew Valley movies, like the ones that play in the movie theater. Emily is four, right? Yeah. I feel like I haven't seen Emily in a while. And thumbs down if you if you never have. It's one of those things that's, like, content in the game that I think is very cool, and probably a lot of work was put into that movie theater and the movies they're in. But I almost never think to actually go and watch a movie or anything like that but it's so it's very cool to see it and especially because there's like uh there's like unique interactions with like which villagers you can bring and the concession stand snacks you buy them like i feel like there's untapped potential there at least for me to learn more about the game new year by the way new year new egg festival and if you have uh it seems like we have a few people who've watched movies. What's your What's your favorite movie? I think mine has to go to the only one I've seen, The Brave Little Sapling, I think it was called. Or is it like... Am I conflating that with, like, The Brave Little Toaster? Is it actually called The Brave Little Sapling, or is it just The Brave Sapling, maybe? I don't even know. Brave Little Toaster was a legit movie, though. Legit movie series, even, maybe? I think there were a couple of those. Speaking of movie theater, great, great movie theater closing theme. Brave Little Sapling, legit my fave because he's cute as hell. Brave Little Sapling, it is really the Brave Little Sapling. Concerned Ape is confirmed a Brave Little Toaster fan. There's no other way. Demetrius, thank you. Sandy, I feel like I haven't seen Sandy in a hot minute either. Uh, Robin was the F7, okay. Prairie King? Prairie King's the one where he, like, shoots the water tower, and there's that guy's, like, weird, creepy face. I remember, I think I remember that one. I have very tangential knowledge of, of some of the movies, because I watched that one Shawnee Do video where he went to the movie theater and watched through every movie. But he, like, edited it and stuff, so it didn't show, like, every bit of every movie, so it was... There's only very specific parts of each movie that actually stand out in my memory. That is one, though. Hey there, Drea. Welcome, welcome. Demetrius. It's very funny to you for some reason. <laughs> the brave little sapling. Pam with the battery pack. Pam is F5 because we skip her. Or she skips town or whatever. Weird how the brain works, right? Like, you make up these these strange little mnemonics for things that don't make sense outside the context of very specific tasks like this, and yet they work so perfectly and fluidly well for what you need to do, for, like, the, the task at hand, even if it's something you're never, ever going to do again, a skill that you never are going to need to, like, refine, something like, like this, where I'm just pressing 
very specific hotkeys for something that I hope I'm never going to have to do again. Chad, if you ever catch me doing a stream again where I go through 100 years of mail for like a, a series of streams, because this is probably going to be more than one stream, um, put me out of my misery, please. <laughs> just like don't show up to the stream so that it just, you know, because like do, doing it once, that's pog. Doing it twice, there's there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me at that point. There's nothing new to be gleaned by doing 200 years worth of mail that you can't already glean from 100 years worth of mail. Your mind pals real estate must be doing great in the housing, housing market. That's a great way to put it. Mysterium is very funny to me for some reason. That's the one that makes no sense, I think. Like, it just shows an eye in the sky, and then it's like, hey, tell all your friends to come watch Mysterium. I think Mysterium might be the Morbius of the Stardew Valley universe. Still haven't seen Morbius, by the way. It's too good to actually go and see and, and ruin the, the pedestal it's been built up upon through sheer memory. Am I keeping all the gifts or just tracking who sent all the mail? Right now I'm keeping all the gifts, but I fully expect that I'm going to sell them all at the end of, uh, at the end of this and see how much I get for it. Where did we start with our money, by the way? How much have we gotten just from Pierre and Louis? Were we at, we were at like 330,000 or something, right? So over the past five or six years of mail, they sent us like $20,000 in the mail. That's like a lot. <laughs> it's Morbin time. The numbers definitely make sense from your experience. Simber, what's your experience? Have you done this? Sim have you done something similar to this in the past? Because I feel like most people don't have any experience with this sheer degree of mail, especially tracking it. So the fact that you say that you have some kind of experience and that these numbers are compatible with that experience definitely intrigues me. Ant is nine, I think. There we go. My secret friend. Any guesses on who my secret friend is? Oh my god, it's Clint. Shaking and crying right now. Five hundred from Mr. Lewis. Two hundred and eighty from Pierre. You shouldn't have. Literally, I didn't. I haven't bought a single thing in your store in so long. <laughs> well, actually, I bought the backpack not that long ago. He's. Just, I guess. I was just. I'm just making up for lost time now. He sent me the funds for the backpack so long ago. Uh, Gus is seven. Clint, secret friend. All right, Pam is F five. Just from receiving mail while playing the game normally. How many years have you played the the game? Not like not like real years, but like I don't know. Is is there something in the game that just like tracks how much uh, mail you get from each person? Did I did I set up this nice fancy little interface for nothing? Hopefully not. Caroline at one. Okay. Robin with the F seven. Egg festival. All right. That's that's a new year. I'm going to go ahead and empty my stocks here. Nothing new from that, that supply. Let me do a quick checking, because I, I know you guys see it on stream, but I want to see the numbers myself. Who is winning right now? Sandy's hit, sitting there at 36. Pam not far behind at 35. Jody's actually coming back up. She's at she's at 20, which is not, you know, the most, but not the least. Is, is the wizard the least at 11 right there? It looks like the, the lowest number. Only 11 from the wizard. How interesting. 35, Pam, 30... Yeah, Sandy just loves us, apparently. Who's going to be the first to hit triple digits? Because you know they're going to hit triple digits eventually. Wizard is stingy. It could very well be Sandy that's the first to hit triple digits. We'll find out uh, in due time, I suppose. Another one from Jody, though. Team Pam, never thought I'd say that. The mighty Pam riseth again. Four for Emily, I'm pretty sure. 
Wizard, Wizard is last. I feel like he sent you a lot during the active game. So much Jade. I do have a, a distinct memory of getting quite a, quite a few uh, pieces of mail from the Wizard during the actual challenge. I think you're right about that. Now that the challenge is over, he sees we, we want for nothing. And so he will give us nothing. Wizard's all about equivalent exchange, I think. Grandpa just sh so shy. Hent with the bombs. The bomb diggity. Chat, what's your go-to frozen pizza brand? Because Shane's been sending us a lot of them. I think these are just Joja brand frozen pizzas. Because Joja would not sell anything that's not Joja brand. Guaranteed. What do you what do you go to? What's your go-to? I used to be a, a Delicio fan, for sure. Just because it was the like the only one that I even knew of. But more often than not, when I do occasionally get a frozen pizza, I like the Casa di Mama. They're they're kind of small, but they're so good. I, I like the I really like the the thin crusts. The thin crusts are top tier. Delicio's got too thick a crust. Home run in mini pizzas. Freshetta, Bark Buitoni. Chicago Town. I literally haven't heard of like any of these. <laughs> I'm just I maybe they're not available in uh in Canada. I don't know. I know Chicago is very um well known for its pizzas, like the location. Like Chicago is built on pizza basically. As far as their their fooding market goes, whatever is closest to my hand—that's a good answer. If I'm buying a frozen pizza. I'm well past caring about brands. It's a, hot, it's, a, it's a good take. You know what? I can respect that take. Cashback rebates program. Uh, three hundred and twenty. So stingy, Pierre. Give me more next time. Be like Mayor Lewis, give me 500 or bust. Pardon me. Alright, Robin with the F7, I think. Frozen pizza saved my life during lockdown, I don't hate. That's, you know what, it's probably a go-to food for a lot of people during lockdown. During, during quarantine and all that. Would not be surprised. I usually go for the refrigerated pizzas near the deli over frozen. If you got a nearby deli and near access to, to fresher pizzas like that, by all means. You know, sometimes you gotta go for... Sometimes sometimes frozen is the only option, and sometimes pizza is the only thing that'll hit the spot. What makes pizza so good? Like, there's so many different kinds of pizza, and so many of them are, like, great. Yo, rare wizard mail. Like, why is pizza just that good, chat? What 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 are they putting it that makes it so good? Because it's like in literally every pizza. Pizza is fruit. Pizza is the perfect food. Pizza really should be its own food group. Papa Murphy's is really good. I just like the dough. I'm a bread guy. I do like bread sticks. Bread sticks in various capacities are uh, are quite nice. And depending on the bread, it's the bread that you get, the type of bread. Bread on its own is just is pretty good too. I think it's because it's hard to mess up, and you can put virtually anything on it. That's a good. That's probably pretty accurate. It's the fact that it's a pizza that makes it good. Nothing more needs to be said. Answer found. We just discovered the meaning of life. So many parsnips. My secret friend Clint. There's no way. Chat. <laughs> Clint 10 years in a row. Something something crazy like that. I don't think we're at 10 years yet. We gotta be, we gotta be getting close though. I don't know how long it takes to go through a single year of mail at the rate that I'm going here. I feel like I've definitely gotten... 
faster at it, though, as I've learned these hotkeys. Uh, was that right? That was F9 for Shane? That was right, okay. My brain knew it, and I didn't trust my brain. Yo, skip the sad song. We're not about sad songs around here. That's more like it. Ooh, baby. My friend Gus. Pizza is fruit pie with extra steps. <laughs> I don't know if I'd take pizza in place of, uh, like a banana cream pie, but I suppose in a, in a roundabout way, you're not wrong. You're decidedly not wrong. I'm tired of pretending pineapple on pizza is bad. Durian, I think you're not alone in that, this, in that, uh, in that boat. I think many people kind of hopped on the bandwagon of saying that pineapple on pizza is bad without, either without ever trying pineapple on pizza, or if they, 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 like, tried it, and they're like, it's okay. But, it, like, it's not their favorite kind of pizza. Er, and when they saw people, like, dunking on it, they decided that because it wasn't their favorite, so they didn't have to defend it, that they could just, like, get in with the cool crowds and be, like, on... I don't know. Be trending on Reddit or something. If they, uh... If they went along with the dunking with the dunking of pineapple on pizza. I think people are starting to finally come around, though. That pineapple on pizza is actually pretty good. That's that's the d direction the discourse seems to be going in recent, uh, in recent years. From everything I can tell, anyway. Strawberry pizza, though. A dessert pizza could be pretty good. If you just put strawberries on, like, a pepperoni pizza, I don't know about that, but... As a Hawaiian, Hawaiian pizza is an insult. Pineapples aren't even from here. Queen of Moons. I, I fully understand it. I felt I understand the disrespect you must feel. Because Hawaiian pizza was actually... Uh, this is Emily, so it's four. Hawaiian pizza, we've been down this road before, was invented in Canada. Like Nova Scotia or something like that. But I guess Nova Scotian pizza doesn't have the same ring to it as Hawaiian pizza. I don't know why they went with Hawaiian, though. Uh, my brain just broke for a second. But we're good. Back on track here. As long as you like the pizza, that's all that matters. Yeah, just go with, go with whatever pizza you like. And if you don't like the pizza, don't eat it. Darn Canadians. I tried pineapple pizza when I was five and hated it, never had it since. I think this is a trap that's easy to fall into. Is that you try something as a child and you hate it. And I've fallen into this trap too, by the way. But then you just like never try it again. The thing is though, your taste buds actually change quite a bit as you grow up, don't they? I'm no uh, food scientist, but I'm pretty sure that's true based even only on, like, anecdotal evidence of my own, where I used to really not like pickles, and now they're some of my favorite foods. So, uh, hey, Shep, thank you for being a member for three months at the Electron level, by the way. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the support. So every so often, I'll just try a food that I know I historically don't enjoy. Like, every so often, I'll try tomatoes or olives or something in that vein, just to see if they're, like, growing on me at all, if my taste buds have changed in some capacity. George is six, okay. And most of the time, the answer is no, and I'm just, like, upset because I ate something that I didn't like. But every so often, I'll eat something, and, like, it's happening, sort of happening with mushrooms now, where I used to really not like mushrooms. And, um... The more I've tried them in recent years, the more I'm like, you know what? I can kind of, I can get on board with mushrooms a little bit. To a lesser extent, that's also happening for me with mustard. But I need to do more mustard experimentation for that, uh, to get the results on that one. It's true, and I still don't try new foods. Hey, if you find foods that you like, and you've got a diverse enough diet to, to make it work for you, no hate. You do you. If you want to eat a single apple every day and somehow that's, that's good enough for, for you, an apple a day keeping that doctor away, who am I to say that that's not okay? I'm not a doctor.
one thing I refuse to come around on is aspics. They're evil. Isn't that, uh, like... Isn't that, like, a floor cleaner? <laughs> aspic? What's, what's an aspic? Avocado is too weird. I'm with you on the avocado, Karita. Avocado, I do not enjoy in any capacity. The taste is lacking, and the texture is offensive. That's my avocado hot take for you. Savory gelatin with vegetables inside? That just sounds like an accident. <laughs> That's like from uh, Eddie's Million, million Dollar Cook-Off, where he made the, the purple goo, and people liked it. Like, some people liked it. So he, like, went with that and tried to recreate it. Is that how Aspic came to be? Because that's what it sounds like to me. Meat jelly? Now we're going into, like, dangerous territory. Is meat jelly and jellied meat different things? Is that is that different stuff? Either way, I don't think I'd like either of them. I've never tried them, though, so, you know. Don't knock until you try it. Try anything once. Any food once, I should say. That's just jello salad. I saw for sale at the grocery store, literally, like, within the past week, something called ambrosia salad. And it looked like marshmallow fluff with, like... It, it just looked like straight-up marshmallow fluff with bits of jello in it and i i didn't know if that's what it was though because like if it was that i was gonna be willing to try it but i don't know if that's what it was and i was scared because all literally all it said on the label was ambrosia salad like it didn't have an ingredients list or anything it was just ambrosia salad like made in the store and i was i was afraid I was afraid that I was going to eat it, and it was actually going to be like horseradish or something instead of uh, instead of marshmallow. But I have no idea. I didn't know. Like that's one thing that's you got to be wary of if you do, if you don't know what you're eating, like what flavor profiles to expect. Don't go in expecting anything because you're probably going to be disappointed when it's not what you expected it to be. Ambrosia is delicious, but what is it though? What's ambrosia though? I know, like, it's uh, the nectar of the gods in mythology terms, but what is it in in real terms? Unknown white fluff? Bacon jelly on burgers? Hey, you do you. <laughs> you do you. I don't know about that one for me personally, but... Just bacon in jelly form does not sound like it would be my jam, personally. I thought I hated mushrooms until I learned that white mushrooms, graminis, and portobellos are the same type of mushroom in different stages of life, and I've only ever had those. So you just hadn't tried any kinds of mushrooms with different flavor profiles. Okay, interesting. What are the type of mushrooms that they serve at the old spaghetti factory that they have in, like, a garlic butter sauce? Anyone know what I'm talking about? They're like these, they're like little mushrooms with like a, like very round, smooth tops. And those were the only types of mushrooms that I ever liked as a child. I haven't eaten them in a very long time, but I distinctly remember enjoying them. Granted, I haven't even been to the old spaghetti factory in a long time, so. But jelly and bacon form? Now you're talking. Watermelon salad is good? I could see that. Watermelon salad would be... Pretty, pretty dope. I saw individual apples for sale at my local grocery store for roughly a dollar. I couldn't tell you the last time I actually bought apples myself, so I don't know if that's, uh, if that's too much or not enough money. But I'm mad or surprised either way, whichever one's more fitting. Watermelon makes you gag. It's literally just water, though. It's just water in solid form, but not ice, and with a little, little extra flavor. How can you how can you dislike water? I guess I guess you know you wouldn't be the first person I've heard that dislikes actual just water. <laughs> like 
Like I've known people that just like don't like drinking water, period, because it doesn't have a taste or whatever. They gotta they gotta dunk those little packs of Crystal Light in it and to make to make it palatable, and also make it. Uh, I don't know. Is Crystal Light? It's probably pretty bad for you, huh? If I had to guess. Robin with the F7. Okay. You're allergic to celery, which is 95% water. That 5% really did you dirty, huh? Uh, Sandy's F8. Those are those general white mushrooms aren't all that great. Yeah, I mean... Chat, does anyone here eat mushrooms raw? I feel like the only time I like mushrooms, period, is if... Actually, I can't really even say this, because I don't think I've ever eaten a mushroom raw or been in a situation to. There's gotta be people out there, though, who, like, buy a pack of mushrooms, like those pre-cut mushrooms, and they just uh, snack on them like they're Cheetos or something, though, right? I would never do it. And I don't think that most people would, but there's got to be people out there who do. There's people out there who eat, like, bricks and stuff, so anything's possible. You like to eat raw champignon occasionally? Is champignon just the type of mushroom, or is it literally just the, the French word for mushrooms? Yo, back-to-back -back largemouth basses. Thank you, Linus. I appreciate it. I'll never forget this moment. They're good on a raw salad. I guess I never thought about that. That salad does have mushrooms on it sometimes. I never eat those salads, though, so joke's on you. People eat bricks? I think literally, like, one person on that, uh, that TLC show back in the day, My Strange Addiction. There's a person who had, like, uh, what's it called? Pika? Where you eat, where you're like inclined to eat non-edible things, and they would like powder up bricks and eat them. I'm not making that up, am I? That's like a real thing. Sediments and minerals. I mean, that's just salt. You're just talking about salt. There we go. 51 stone. You got a full stack of stone in the other chest, I assume. George, <laughs> just on top of it. The stone and the wood. There's, oh my gosh, there's like, we got like two full stacks of wood, one full stack of stone. Actually ridiculous. Didn't take a quick moment to, to drink my water, by the way. Alright, I'm hydrated. I'm good. It's time to get back to... Mail time! Mail time! Mail time! Mail time! I think I heard of a guy who ate metal. Um, That was me. Just kidding. No, there was a guy that ate uh, like a whole airplane, right? Not in one sitting. That's absolutely ridiculous. But like in bits and pieces over the course of several years, I think he consumed an entire airplane. Or was that uh, just a publicity stunt for Guinness Book of World Records? I could see it going either way. I'm giggling beside myself. I'm glad you like- I'm glad the soundboard is, uh... <laughs> he's getting some love. Ham is F5. I will say I had not interfaced with Blue's Clues media in any capacity until uh, I was looking up the clips for the soundboard to put on for today's stream. And uh, the new guy who does Blue's Clues, I don't know what his name is, but he seems like he's doing like a good job. I watched like a like a minute or two of the of the new Blue's Clues, and it's called like Blue's Clues and You or something. Obviously, I'll always have the nostalgia factor going for me with Steve. I think everyone will, who uh, grew up with Blue's Clues in some capacity. Steve, yo, back-to-back -back wizard, that's the rarest male we've ever seen. But the new guy, he's, he does, he's pretty good. I think that, uh, I think the children of today who are watching that version of Blue's Clues are in good hands. Do 
used to love Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues was your very early childhood. I, I, Blue, Blue's Clues is also a part of my very early childhood. It's one of like the two main shows I remember from my early childhood. The other one being the big comfy couch. I don't remember like hardly anything about that show. I remember the design of the main character. I don't remember her name. But she was like, she had, she was just like a clown, right? She had like this big red nose and like massive shoes and she had the pigtails and like she wore all pink overalls or something like that. The big comfy couch. And there there was there was an the eponymous big comfy couch was indeed large and luxurious by the looks of things. But I honestly don't remember much more than that. Lunette and Molly. Was her name Molly? That sounds familiar. There was also um the bear in the big blue house. Any bear in the big blue house enjoyers in chat? That was also a great uh, a great show back in the day. Molly was her, Molly was her doll and Lunette was the clown. You're so right. You just unlocked a memory for me. What the hell? I got out of my rhythm there. Okay, we're good. Bear in the Big Blue House was my jam. It's so good, right? Like you know, but like I, I always remember him like going up on the balcony and talking to the moon at the end of the episode, and they'd sing their goodbye song. It was so awesome. Was the bear in the big blue house, like the, like the character himself, was that a puppet or was that a guy in a bear costume? Because there's no way it was like a computer generated bear. It, that was a practical, real bear. I mean, probably not a real bear, but I guess you never know. But it looked too good. It, it was not like a computer bear. That was that a puppet or was that was that a, a bear man, a man bear, if you will. Scooby-Doo. I did watch my fair share of Scooby-Doo as a child as well. R Row Raggy and all that. Real bear died blue. Found the fake bear in the big blue house enjoyer. The bear was not even blue. Ayana, how dare you? The house was blue. The bear was not blue. I'm pretty sure anyway, unless I'm misremembering. Maybe I'm just making a fool of myself now. I guess costume. It, it, I, I have to imagine it was a costume. It, it did not look like a puppet. It was too, like, well done. Maybe it was an animatronic. In which case, like, the Five Nights at Freddy's series needs to learn a thing or two from Bear in the Big Blue House. I have no idea what the show is anyway. Touché, touché. Demetrius is three. Good to go. Obviously, it was a real bear. If, if you told me it was a real bear as a child, I probably would have believed you. Up until, like, the age of 10. What if it was just, like, a taxidermy bear? No, it was too, it was too fluid to be, to be a, to be a taxidermy operation. That bear was dancing. Dancing to the, to the tunes of whatever the heck this song is. I always forget where this song comes from, but I love it. This is the song from Emily's Heart Event, I think, maybe. A real bear in a puppet costume. <laughs> I love the visual of that. That they managed to get a bear that could, like, act in the bear in the big blue house. But they didn't like the look of the bear, so they got the bear to wear a bear costume that looked better. <laughs> That's the true lore as far as I'm concerned now. Back-to-back -back Jody mail, by the way. Emily's dance song, so good. It's what they call a full-body Muppet. Almost, almost triple back-to-back -back from Jody. A full-body Muppet. So a costume with internal controls for the facial movements. So there was a so you, there was a person inside the costume, but and they were like moving the body around. But in front of that person's face was like a bunch of like wires and pulleys and stuff that uh, like made like the fine 
emotive capabilities of of the of the bear. That sounds so cool and also like kind of scary if you're the guy in the costume. I was talking about Five Nights at Freddy's and it was, you know, it's got some got some bearing to it there. Huh, bearing. Uh, Emily is four. It was a spring lock suit, that's what I'm saying. Don't sweat in those things. Yo, Clint again? Alright, Pierre. It's gonna be F6. I'm forgetting my hockeys. I'm thinking too much about the bear in the big blue house. Trying to unlock all those uh, dormant childhood memories. Team Umizumi. Was that another childhood show? I feel like I recognize the name of that, but I don't know anything about it. Just make a homunculus like the rest of us. Karita, do you have something to share with the class? New new egg fest new year, new egg festival. I think it's time to head in and save the day. I think, I think it's been a little while since we've done that one, so take care of business there. 2 p.m. It's 2 p.m. today, and we literally have not done anything except open mail. <laughs> Just like the few seconds in between each letter have added up to 2 p.m. That's wild. That's a late bedtime for Chloe, too. Dot, dot, dot. No worries, Krobus. Quickly water Timby, the little Timby break, if you don't mind. And now it's back to... Mail time. All right, Max and Ruby were those the those were the weird rabbits, right? Like I I I always was like put off. If it's the show I'm thinking it is, I was kind of put off by the animation style of Max and Ruby. It kind of like gave me this weird uncanny valley feeling as a kid. I couldn't quite describe it, but like the way those rabbits moved was upsetting to my small child brain. Probably works like Big Bird. One arm control, one arm controls one. Wait, one arm controls one of the arms, and one the other is held up by the head control and the beak and face. The camera cuts to the disguised one moving. Up. Okay, fair enough. I never thought about like the the logistics of Big Bird, honestly. Who's in the Big Bird costume? Is there like an actor who like is in the Big Bird costume every time, or is there? Uh... And I'm not talking about the person who, like, voices Big Bird. I doubt that the person who voices Big Bird and the person inside the, the Big Bird costume are the same. Or is there not a person inside the Big Bird costume at all? Now I'm afraid. A smaller bird. Carol Spinney, until recently. It's someone else now. Did, uh, did Carol retire? Jody just really can't nail down her fertilizer needs, seriously. I mean, to be fair to her, this this has been over the course of, uh, of a few years, and she's only sent me 75 quality fertilizer, and, you know, 60 bit, 60 bit, I mean, that's kind of a lot, even over the course of a few years, that, that adds up for sure. I don't know if I've missed any hotkeys yet, or mispressed any hotkeys. I hope that, uh, I don't, I don't know how actively people are paying attention to the counters on the side either, because I know it's probably tough to keep track of on its own, but if you happen to notice me mispress one, do let me know, and I'll try my best to correct it. Nice mail uniform, thank you. I put a lot of thought into it, all 30 seconds at the start of the stream. <laughs> I think it worked out nicely. Too bad she doesn't use fertilizer on the produce she, she sends you. Could have been helpful for the no level up challenge. I like where your head's at, Simber. That would that would have been clutch. But Jody Jody isn't the one who sends you produce. Jody sends you the fertilizer. Caroline sends you the produce. By their powers combined, they might be able to complete the uh, the quality crops bundle. But unfortunately, they, they only ever interact. I mean, I guess they are friends, right? Jody, Jody and Caroline. I see them talking in Town Square every now and again.
the results speak for themselves, indeed. Pam is F5. Kent is 9. My friend Gus. I like that Gus always signs it with your friend Gus. On the other hand, I don't like that that Clint signs his with Clint the blacksmith. Like, he needs to remind me every single time. Dude, you literally only sell, send me, like, metal ingots. Even if I didn't know anything else about you. And I do, considering I have ten hearts with you. I feel like I could deduce that you're a blacksmith without you needing to write, you know, Clint the blacksmith on every single piece of mail. Like, what if I signed off... What if I start signing off everything with, uh... Argon the streamer? <laughs> I kind of... <laughs> that could... You know, that could kind of be empowering, honestly. Maybe, maybe I'll start doing that. I don't know. It seems, it seems almost narcissistic in a way. But in other ways, it also seems kind of pog. How many other Clints do we know exactly? That's another good point. Watching you as I'm breaking over a, breaking open 160 artifact troves. Uh, timey or Timmy, Timey? I'm gonna go with Timey. Um, are you looking for anything in particular from those artifact troves? If so, good luck. If you're just opening them for fun, then you and I have different ideas of fun. I find it fun to open thousands of pieces of mail in a row. But you know what? I guess we're kindred souls in that way, aren't we? Best of luck to you either way. The Stream Master. I would never call myself that, but it is a cool title to, to give to someone else. That's one thing. you can, No one can give a title to themselves, right? Like, you can't give yourself any kind of title, period, unless it's literally, like, your legal professional title or something. And even in that case, you haven't given the title to yourself. You've earned the title by, like, going through school and getting the job and stuff. But if you just, like, give yourself, like, like, I'm gonna start calling myself, uh, Argon Matrix, the the patient or something. That's, like, so... Everyone's gonna hate you. <laughs> like, like no one... Like, that's so narcissistic. You know, like, I don't know. You could, you could do it facetiously. I'm sure there's a way you could do it that would be clever if it's all tongue-in-cheek and stuff. But, uh... If you're, if you're seriously trying to endow yourself with a title, let me give you a little piece of advice and just stop. Just stop. Get some help. Because it's probably... Not gonna stick. Just saying. Argon the Unyielding. That's a Dark Souls boss, I'm pretty sure. Clint the Blacksmith. See, Clint's okay. He can, he can, he, I mean, I don't necessarily like that he has to call himself the Blacksmith every single letter, but he's earned the right to, at the very least, by going through Blacksmith School. Does blacksmithing have its own, like, trade school that you go to? Because, like, blacksmithing is still a profession that is exercised even in the modern day. And it's not people, like, making, uh, swords and shields and stuff, I'm pretty sure. But blacksmiths do still exist, right? And if so, is there a specific school that they go to for blacksmithery? Like a smithing school? Or is it wrapped up in some other kind of trade school? I can honestly see it going either way, because it seems like such a specialty thing that you would need, uh... That you would obviously need specialty equipment to train for it. Evelyn's five, right? Yeah. Probably an apprenticeship. That, yeah, th that actually makes sense. An apprenticeship under an another blacksmith. But that, that, then that begs the question, who was the first blacksmith? I've only ever seen blacksmiths at heritage shows. That's a title you could give to an actual Dark Souls boss, the first blacksmith. Andre, the first blacksmith. I feel like I haven't gotten mail from Marnie in literally, like, a year. My cousin is in classes for metalworking, and he'll be looking for an apprenticeship afterward. Fair enough. 
some do make swords and armor. I guess for like, uh, like obviously not for practical purposes, but swords and armor do still have a market in a sort of niche capacity, I guess. It's folded, it's tempered, and it does its job. One of Zed's other mods is studying blacksmithing. That's pretty cool. The first blacksmith was just some guy who heated shiny rocks on the on the bed. It does make you wonder, like, how... Like, some, like, not even just, like, blacksmithing, but how, like, anything... Who was who the first person to try something, right? Like, who was the first person to drink cow's milk? And how weirded out was everyone else by the process? And you can extrapolate that to just about anything. Who was the first person to ever shave? And how long did it take before the second guy caved? A baby cow? But that's not a person. Like, who's the first person to, to you know... I don't, I don't have to go into detail about the extraction process of milk. Use your imagination. I'm glad I live in a time way after those dudes. They did pave the way for very nice, convenient lives for, for many of us here today, thankfully. Cows are people. A, a human being, a homo erectus. Cows can be people, sure, I have no qualms with that, but I'm talking specifically about the, the human... the human species. The modern humans. How did we discover which mushrooms were tasty, which ones made us see God, and which ones killed us? Some some unlucky souls, I would imagine, put their lives on the line for that exact uh, <laughs> exact purpose. Was that triple back-to-back -back wizard mail? Extremely rare air. How about the invention of cheese? Hey, cheese, hey guys, this rotten milk is fantastic. It's tr yeah, that's honestly a good point. I feel like cheese probably has a very storied history behind it. 111 hay? You're telling me you have a full stack of hay? We sure do. Wait, is these, oh, these aren't the first cookies we've gotten. We just dropped them on the ground earlier. Yo, back to, almost back-to-back -back quadruple wizard tech? Wizard's trying to catch up all of a sudden. Wizard's trying to catch up all of a sudden? I don't know how far he is behind. I haven't looked at the totals recently, but I'm sure you all can tell much easier than I can. Robin is 7? F7? My question is, in, did they put it in a container or from the cow directly? That's also, I was also wondering that, James, but I didn't want to vocalize the thought because it sounded like a weird question to me. But I'm glad you took the bullet to vocalize it for me. Who was like, hey, I'm going to put a piece of dried cow stomach in milk and see what happens? What does that even make? I, I don't know what food this alludes to. Is this head cheese? Maybe? I don't even know. Um, F2 is Linus. Guardy Valley Fair is happening tomorrow. Get it in the calendar. Cheese probably happened while trying to preserve milk. Lots of foods are preserved with salt. Salt's part of cheese. I could probably see that. How, how something could come from that, for sure. Isn't there a, a, a Caleb City sketch? Where he does a... Where he's like... The first person to make cheese or something like that. I remember that one. Is that what his name is? Caleb City? It's the it's Ca the Caleb that does all the skits. He's pretty popular. You pro some people in chat probably know about him. Rene is made of cow stomach? Or is that Rennet? I don't even know. I don't want to eat the stomach of any other living creature most of the time, probably. I'll keep my stomach bag to itself, thanks. 
Basically, dried cow stomach has a culture that's one of the most commonly used ways to make cheese. Really? Hey, the more you know. That's the... That's the... Like, astonishing nature of human ingenuity, I suppose. That over the thousands and thousands of years that modern humans have been around, those kinds of weird discoveries just, you know, get made. Blessed are the cheese makers. Do I eat sausage? Because that's typically intestines. Well, there's an exception to every rule. I honestly haven't eaten a sausage in a very long time, though. Neither a sausage nor like a like a wiener, like a hot dog wiener. I haven't had any kind of meat in that uh, in that form. In quite some time. Now I've got now I got a bit of a hankering though. There's nothing that hits the spot quite like when you have a craving for like a like a hot dog from a street fair or like a carnival or something like that. The atmosphere when you get a hot dog like in that hustle and bustle of the crowd and you know on like a hot day or something like that. I don't know, it's I it's not it's not something that I crave very often. And thank and usually like I only get that craving when I'm already there and I like can smell the hot dogs and the fair food at work. But it man, it's it's an experience. It's more than just a food, it's an experience. Costco hot dogs. As a vegetarian who's not vegan, this cheese is made with cow stomach is not a fun fact for me. I mean, I don't know. That's Keep in mind, that's only anecdotal experience or anecdotal um, discourse from within this one stream chat. Do your own research. I don't know how many cheeses out there are actually made with cow stomachs. Praise be the one 125 Costco hot dog. I think I don't think I've literally ever stepped foot inside a Costco. I hear lots of good things about their food though. Charlie Barley is always talking up like the was it like the cheesecake from Costco, something like that. New Year, new egg festival. How fitting is it that we're that like each year of mail is uh. What's Pierre? Pierre is F6. Each year of mail is christened with an egg festival invitation. And the reason we're going through all this mail was in the pursuit of an egg to be in with. Like Master Ugwe says, there are no accidents. Yes, please do your own research. It's, it's, it's a valuable skill to have even outside the context of cow stomachs and cheese. Sandy has sent twice twice as many gifts as Emily. Emily needs to needs to pick it up is what I'm hearing there. Sandy also does send like a ton of gifts, lo and behold. She's got nothing else to do, I guess. She's just out there in the desert. By her lonesome, except for like one day of the year. And we were her only friend for a long time. Like Chloe and Chloe and Sandy were kinda hitting it off for a while, honestly. Go there every Saturday, get some milk from her, and, you know, bring her crocuses, and it was a good time. And then all of a sudden, we just stopped showing up forever, basically. <laughs> we haven't seen Sandy in a hot minute. But she never gave up the hope, as you can see here. None of them ever gave up the hope. They were always sending the, these, uh, these gifts and this mail in the vain, vain Hail Mary of a hope that one day Chloe would come back to the land of living. And she did. And she did. Finally, when it was when it was her time, when her people needed her most, she returned. Hey there, Lisa. How you doing? According to Wikipedia, only five percent of the world's cheeses is made with animal. That's good to know. Jody is eight, right? Yeah. I will forever 
uh, wish that Sandy was a marriageable slash roommateable. I fully and wholeheartedly agree. I think many people are in that same boat. I think in um, in Leap a Lot's most like recent survey slash study that he did, I watched the results video on that, and he and like the vast vast there was like one question that was like, uh, "Hey, who's the which character in Stardew Valley is not marryable that you would want to marry?" And I think the number one answer by a significant amount was Sandy, if I remember right. So Sandy appreciators, you are not alone. In fact, you are many. And I am among you. And only seems to be holding a grudge after all the Haley praise. <laughs> Touche. We're always going to visit Haley, and uh, and Emily's just, you know, she's just, like, wall dressing. It's all right. Emily will come around. I fully believe in that. She's got a good attitude whenever she does send a letter. She's, got, she's always got that little, like, dude in there. The little skater dude. Like, cha, dude. Hey there, Zomba. Welcome. Among Us. I did say something adjacent to Among Us, so you know what? Get your get your susses and your Among Us and your he vented's out there. Get it out of your system now, and we can all all move along with our lives. You want to marry Marlin? Honestly, that's not one I would ever think of. But you know what? Fair. I can't think of a good reason that you shouldn't be able to marry Marlin. Honestly. Unless he, like, doesn't want to, which, you know, that's also important to take into consideration. Two hours? We're only two hours into the stream? That's not bad at all, honestly, for the amount of mail that we've opened. We've still got a long, long way to go. I don't think we're even close to, like, a quarter of the way through the mail. But like I said at the top of the stream, we're not going to do all this mail in a single stream. This is not going to be a 12-hour fiesta. Even if it were, I highly doubt that I could get this all done in 12 hours. Back-to-back -back Jody, by the way. But you know what? That's fine. It's fine because it just means we'll get more mail time in future streams to come. Mail time! Mail time! Mail time! So good. I love that you can hear him, like, hop off the couch at the very end. Or hop off his chair at the end, or hop from somewhere. You hear, like, the wee in the <laughs> in the sound clip. It's so good. Alright, uh, Mr. Lewis, or F1. Mr. Lewis, bring me a dream. Sandy should be an option. Absolutely true. Maybe one day. I'm sure there's mods out there for it. It, it must have been, like, one of the first mods ever created, honestly. Mary Sandy mod. There's no way it's not already a thing. I mean, there's like Mary Pam mods, honestly, so. <laughs> I guess Pam, you know what, Pam? I could see people wanting to marry in some capacity, too, so maybe that's not that surprising. New Egg Festival, New Year. You love to see it. What's your favorite Stardew OST? Uh, I really like the uh, Sam's Electronic Band remix one. Not a re not a remix, but you know the Sam's Band Electronic version. I think is what it's actually canonically called. That one's my jam. I will uh, I will die on that hill for sure. But the Molten Jelly track that is also a very good pick. Just about any of the Volcano soundtracks, honestly, top tier. Filling out these chests nice and quick. You really like the pirate theme? The pirate theme is good, but it's one that I can only listen to, like, every so often. It's too mind-flooding. Like, it gets in your head and makes you... 
If, if you listen to it in the wrong state of mind, you, can, you could easily have a panic attack. It's just one of those songs that induces some kind of, like, anxiety in me. I don't know what it is. Grapefruit Skies is underrated. Grapefruit Skies is one that I always don't think about, but anytime I listen to it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is a fantastic song. Very true. Saving all the loot so we can see it at the end? Absolutely. There's no other way to do it as far as I'm concerned. And then I think I will sell all the loot at the end just to see what kind of profits we can rake in. Who knows, it could be a sleeper money-making strategy. Literally sleeper, because we, you know, I don't, I, don't have to, I don't have to explain the joke to you for that one, hopefully. Pirate sleep paralysis demon. Can a song be a sleep paralysis demon? I never thought of that. An auditory. I guess a demon doesn't have to be like a, f a visual manifestation, does it? It could be a. It could be an auditory manifestation. Demons don't like. Well, number one, demons don't really exist. I'm pretty sure. So they don't have to bend to our ideas of what's real and what's not. There's that skater dude. Star Lumpy is the best song with the best name. I do think Star Lumpy probably has the best name. I don't know if it's the best song, though. It is a good song still. But it always does make me crack a smile, at the very least, if not laugh out, laugh out loud when I hear the name Star Lumpy. Sounds like, it's, it sounds like the name of an Earthbound song, to be honest with you. Should have had a running total of mail opened as well as the breakdown. I mean, we do have more or less a running total based because we can add up all the all the gifts that we get on the side there, and then if we add in the number of years times the number of like uh, like non gift mail that we get, because that's the only thing that we're not tracking as far as mail goes is how many of the just like invitations to festivals and stuff like this that we get. I'm not tracking that, but that's a static constant from year to year, right? So if I just multiply by the number of years that we do this, or that we missed, then I can get that number and we can add it all up. So a little math may be involved, but there will be a final total for the amount of mail. I do think the more interesting thing will be to see, like, what kind of gift percentages you got, though over the course of 100 years, which is why I set it up as I did here. I was collecting dust in my tool shed and found this high-grade explosive, thought you might want it. That's Kent for you. Back my Animal Crossing game after four months and there were only two pieces of mail in the mailbox. So the game had deleted most of the mail and, and three, three or four months of interest. Oh my goodness. Honestly, I'm kind of glad that I was I was partially worried because I didn't really look fully into the, the mail mechanics for Stardew Valley. And I wasn't sure if like after a certain point it did start deleting old mail. Which, I mean, maybe it does. Maybe that's still a thing that happens, but obviously it's not, uh, not something to concern ourselves with anytime soon, apparently. But there's no way to tell specifically which years each of these mail are from. I speak good English, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. That was the the way I structured that sentence was uh, something else. Two, two weeks of no streams was too much. Correction: It was only a week and a half. But who's counting? I think it was only a week and a half, maybe. But. On that note, I do plan on uh, probably probably this weekend I'll be posting a new stream schedule because I do want to do more frequent streams and just not not like super long ones like this one for instance I said at the top is probably only going to go like three or four hours at the most. New Egg Festival, by the way. But who knows? It might go longer than that depending on how I feel by the by the three to four hour mark. But I would like to do at least, like, you know, my plan, my sort of scatterbrained plan right now to sort of uh, maintain 
a decent stream schedule while also having plenty of time to edit and work on other things in the background is to do three streams a week at three hours per stream, which is, I think, now that I think about it, I think that's literally the exact same thing that Unsurpassable Zed does. <laughs> So maybe he's already got it figured out, and I just had to had to emulate that. I don't know. Either way, that's uh, that's where my thought process is at right now. So I'll see, and I'll make a schedule, and I'll figure it all out on my own time. Don't worry about that. Just keep an eye on like the in the Discord and on the community tab for when I do actually notify you of that. Hey there, Pikachu Bob. Oh, speaking of the community tab, by the way, um, I am going to be starting to post more... Oh, I pressed the wrong button for that one. Hold on. I pressed I pressed Pam when it was supposed to be Gus. That's an Alt-F5 moment right there. All right. Um, Gus is 7. Okay. Pierre is F6. I just got to get back on my, back on my hotkey meta here. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be posting more to my community tab for... YouTube members exclusively. I'm just going to be posting some like behind the scenes content and uh, sort of my thoughts and idea processes on what I'm working on for YouTube members. So if you're not a member, no worries. You're not going to be like missing out on any super core content. But if you like to see some of that behind the scenes stuff, then uh, keep an eye out there if you are a YouTube member. By all means, I would appreciate you. I appreciate the support nevertheless. And I think that uh, some extra sort of nuggets of behind the scene goodness are more than warranted for the support and generosity that you offer me. I imagine Gus walking over to the, to the meal box and shoving an omelet in as a gift. Now imagine him doing that, but the box is already full with 17 other omelets that he's already given to me. And that's sort of the situation we're in right now. I'm gonna skip this song. I don't. I just. That's one of the songs on the Stardew soundtrack that I just like don't like really. <laughs> it might. It might honestly be the only one. Uh, Pam F5. Good stuff. Do I have another big project planned, or am I gonna do more variety streams? Yes and yes. I do, I do have another, I mean, I have, I have, that's my problem right now is I kind of have too many projects that I want to do. So I need to just like focus down one and, uh, and just go for it. I think that's a better way to do it than trying to divide my time amongst many different projects. But I also have ideas for smaller streams and different games and also different, uh, things to do within Stardew Valley itself. So I know it's been quite kind of quiet on the channel for the past little while. But rest assured, things are going on in the background. And I can't wait to share the fruits of that labor. Of those labors, even. With you in the near future. Hard to finish projects when you have a lot of ideas, you're telling me. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, Price of Perfection was a fantastic time. I had a lot of fun with it during the actual challenge phase of the challenge. As opposed to like this uh, sort of afterglow honeymoon phase of the challenge. But there were so many ideas that I also wanted to work on. But I wanted to make sure that the price of perfection was always my main focus because it was such a... It was, it was such... I mean, I just wanted to see it through to the very end and I didn't want anything to distract me and like take away from my passion for the project. And honestly, I think I managed to maintain my passion pretty substantially through the entire runtime of the challenge. There were some days, don't get me wrong, where like, uh, where like streaming would be a bit more of a chore than other days, but that mo that mostly came down to not the streams it's themselves or the challenge itself. It more came down to like stuff in my personal life, like whether I had a good day at work or a bad day or I hadn't had enough sleep or something or whatever. And even on those days, streaming was such a treat. Streaming the challenge was such a treat because it was like a reprieve from all that. It was it was my getaway. And I will always be thankful for that. Moving your mouse and keyboard to your bed, better reach. 
I appreciate that. I, I understand that. I, I have, like, a terrible setup for the record. Like, if I showed you a picture of my setup that I'm working with, with right now, you might have, uh, like, some some far-flung idea of, like, because you've probably seen streamer setups on other streams and in other capacities. You might have a streamer setup of, of your own, even, with, like, the double monitors on, like, a big, wide desk, and you got all, like, the... Like the, like the neon lights and the decorations and the memorabilia. Nah, I got like none of that going on. I don't- I, I have one very small desk that can only hold one monitor. And then I have a small table off to the side that's like lower down. That houses my second monitor and that's what I read you guys on. And that's like I'm playing the game on my main monitor and then I look over and I can see chat. I have to like make it real big so I can actually read it. I should definitely invest in an actual proper setup here at some point. But hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And for right now, my neck ain't broke from looking back and forth between the monitors. As long as I do keep a good ergonomic workout, I'm doing fine. You just read chat on your iPad while you stream. I did think about doing, uh, because I didn't didn't have a second monitor set up until I started streaming. Until I started streaming the Price Perfection specifically. And I did think about just doing a setup where I had, like, chat on my phone or something like that. But testing that out, it turned out to be just, like, too cumbersome for me, and I was like, it's... I might as well just bite the bullet and, you know, get the second monitor and try and set it up as best I can. And I had a heck of a time actually setting it up. But now that it's been set up, we're living the dream. 420 gold from Pierre, nice. I have a hospital tray table and sit in a recliner, holds my laptop and collects junk. That is a striking vis visual, Lisa. It sounds like it would work pretty well, honestly. Those those hospital like tables, they're pretty uh pretty legit. Using your phone is what you have to do, it's a pain. Yeah, I can't imagine that it would be a sustainable model. I'm sure it works in a pinch to read chat while you're streaming on like your phone. But uh it's not something you want to go with long term if you can help it. Yo, back-to-back -back money. Triple back-to-back -back money from Pierre? He just sent me, like, over a thousand dollars. Pierre's kind of based, honestly. I'll never say that again. But in that specific context, Pierre was kind of based. Just saying. Alright, George is a uh, hotkey number six. Hockey number nine for Kent. That's six and nine right in a row. The way I have these hotkeys set up, by the way, uh, I just did it like in alphabetical order. And when I did that, something cute that I kind of realized is that the hotkeys for Evelyn and George are right beside each other, as are the hotkeys for Jody and Kent. Kind of funny how that worked out. Just, just a very, you know... <laughs> strangely cute thing to me that the, that the hotkeys for, for the lovey-dovey types are like right beside each other. Not lovey-dovey types I suppose, but you know, the, the married couples. Robin and Demetrius be like, what? <laughs> um, Evelyn is number five, right? Yeah, number five. And I will say in that same vein, um, Clint and Emily are almost right beside each other. Just Demetrius is right in the middle of them, though. Just another way in which Clint, Clint can never win at anything in life, apparently. Poor Clint, dude. Poor Clint. How high is the inflation in Pelican Town to the point where $1,000 can get you five salads? I mean, we don't know the conversion rate between, uh... Between a dollar and a, and a like real world U.S. dollar or something like that. So who knows? It could be more of like a yen situation, where a thousand dollars is you know like not that much money. Koji, thank you for being a member at the Electron level for three months in a row. I appreciate it. 
Can we get another Hamilton song after all the mail? I, I will promise nothing, but you know what? I might need some kind of release after all this mail, and that might be just the thing I'm looking for. But as of right now, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Despite the smorgasbord of things that I have found through the mail. Have we gotten every possible gift in the mail yet, chat? Is this, is this every item you can receive in the mail between these two chests? Or is there one item that just, for whatever reason, we haven't had the luck of the draw to get? I feel like this has got to be just about everything. Does anyone know how many people have seen the rare green jelly? I think only two, yeah. Yeah, I think Karita's right that only two people have ever seen the, the rare green jelly from exclamation point jelly. Take a quick stretch break and a quick uh, quick hydration break as well. All right, we're back at it. Back at it with the mail time. Mail time. Not we're not going full mail time yet. All right. Chill in the air, you don't say. It's freaking spring, Lewis. Get your head in the game. Ain't no chill in the air. I guess I guess spring can be kind of chilly though. Actually, up where I'm living right now, uh, I feel like we're still in spring just about. Even though we should be more in summer, and there have been some hot summer days, but it's very rainy and like kind of brisk a lot of the time still here. Which, honestly, I'm totally on board with. That's some of my favorite weather, is the rainy briskness and the fog and overcast. Oh. Doesn't get any better than that. Yo, Jay Nuggets, thank you for being a member for three months at the Electron level as well. Three months, wow. Go AVS. Thank you, thank you for the support. I greatly appreciate it. Spring mornings can be quite chilly, it's true. Although we're at 12.10pm, uh, I don't know if I'd constitute that as morning. I think the construction business in Stardew is ridiculously competitive, hence the ultra-low prices. Touché. Where does the word, uh, touché originate from, chat? I use that word kind of a lot, both in- both on-stream and off-stream. It's a- it's a French word, clearly, because it's got the E with the accent aigu over it. And honestly, like, what does it even mean? I, I, I use it, and I don't even have... I, like, if you ask me to define what the word touché means, I don't think I could. <laughs> I know, like, the context that I use it in. But even in that context, I'm like, you know, I don't, it's just touché, man. It's just touché. Just touché, forehead. It means touch? I mean, literally, yes, that's true. But in in the context that it's usually used in, what the heck? How would you define it? New New Year, New Egg Festival. It's like your point, essentially. I don't. Is it like that? It's like acknowledging that your point is like a valid thing that I didn't think about, or that like I I don't know. By the way, Rubescavades, thank you for being a member for three months as well. The Electron level. It's from sword fighting slash fencing, I think. Is it like when you get like, like, poked by the sword? You're like, oh, you touched me, or touche? I, I mean, it's, that's, that that kind of does ring a bell, actually. That uh, it is from the fencing world. I don't know where I, I might have heard that in the past, but I kind of just want to believe you because it sounds familiar. Welcome back, Elaine. Thought it was a fencing thing, but you don't know. Unless it's like a weird Mandela effect thing where we all think it's a fe it's related to fencing, but it literally has nothing to do with it. Google says it's used as an acknowledgement during a discussion of a good and clever point made at one's expense by another person. Touche. Should have just Googled it, I guess. Google is does have the answer to many questions. 
are we at the point in history where the terms Google and search are synonymous? Kind of like, you know, Kleenex and tissue paper and Band-Aid and bandage are like the same, like, and you, like Ziploc bags have a... Uh, you know, it's all those different things where the brand name is just used, like the most common brand name is just used to refer to the thing, even though it's not the actual thing. Is Google also in that same boat? But he, but I don't know if it's quite as ubiquitous though, right? Because you would never go to the library and say, "Hold on, let me. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Google that in the book." Like it's specific. It's specifically to in like an online capacity. Like you can't Google something outside of the internet, right? Like if if you tried to if you tried to use it in that context, people would look at you like you're crazy and then call the police. I suppose it also doesn't help that like Google is the only search engine that most people even use anymore. So like when you say that you're going to Google something, it's very rare that you're not actually using Google for it. It's like a uh, like I don't know the last time I used Bing or something like that. Many less technical people don't know what Google, that Google has competitors, so Google is the entire internet. It's like Coca-Cola. Google doesn't want Google to be synonymous with search because words that are that are part of the common vocabulary can't be copyrighted. For example, escalator used to be the name of a product. Interesting. I feel like that was probably in a YouTube video essay because I think I've seen a video essay about this exact topic recommended to me at some point in the past few months. I didn't watch it, but I think it was in my recommended and it caught my eye as something that I might be interested in watching. Where it's like, uh, like a thumbnail was like, Google doesn't want you to use the term Google anymore. And I'm like, what? And then I forgot about it and started, you know, playing Stardew Valley. Is Ask Jeeves still a thing? I hope so. If not, can we get some 07s for Jeeves? Poor Jeeves. Never stood a chance against, uh, against our corporate overlord Google. Does anyone remember, um, this might have only been a thing because I was in French Immersion. But does anyone have experience with Babblefish? It was like Google Translate before Google Translate was a thing. And I remember it being so bad. <laughs> like, like I would use it in very, very limited context during, like, my French education. And even then, it was very unreliable. Babblefish. I haven't thought about Babblefish in a long time, but it was in like a similar context to Ask Jeeves. Like I'm pretty sure the browsers on our computers at school had like both Babblefish and Ask Jeeves integrated into them as like part of their, you know, like bookmarks or something. Automated translation is hard. I don't doubt it. And I mean, Kudos to the Babblefish developers for trying to, like, pioneer that. I don't know if there were things before Babblefish. There most likely were. Babblefish was probably the first one to pick up any, like, sort of mainstream Steam. And even nowadays, like, Google Translate is far, far from perfect. With the leaps and bounds we've made in that, uh... Ooh, Double George Mail? The leaps and bounds we've made in the pursuit of better translation efforts, better automated translation efforts. Pretty great. Pretty astounding to see. Finally a baby jelly. Congratulations. People still don't realize how unreliable it is. Yeah, a lot of people just kind of take it as gospel. That it's like a perfect... That like Google Translate is perfect in every way. But I think most people who are at least, you know consistently online are aware that Google Translate is not the uh, <laughs> is not the perfect technology and not, it's not like Google pretends that it's perfect either. All right, real quick, I'm going to take a quick look at the uh, at the scoreboard here, the scoreboard tally because I haven't been able to look at it in the past little while. Who's 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 top in the board here? I know Sandy was for a while and it looks like she's still 
the highest, right? 74 from Sandy. The Wizard has caught up again. 62. 57 inch from Shane. 53 from Evelyn. Is that the lowest? Is Evelyn the lowest, chat? Oh, Gus is also at 53. I thought we were getting a decent amount from Gus, honestly. I think maybe we got a lot from Gus early on. 53 from Gus. F Wait, 40 from Emily? What the heck is going- Emily, what are you doing? Emily's got to go on a tear here pretty soon. Or else she's, uh, I don't know. Anyone out here on te hashtag Team Emily? Your chances are not looking great, but keep in mind that we're, we still got a lot of mail to go through, so I don't know if that's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that number is going to bear out in the long run, but I think Emily could definitely make a comeback. I mean, the Wizards made a comeback, and Jody, it, like, it, it's kind of ebbs and flows, right? You dumped her sister for a hundred years. I didn't I didn't dump her. She could have come to visit. There's room in that bed for two. Alright. Back at it again. Back at the, the mail grind here. It's mail time. Mail time. Alright, um Andy's F eight. Team Wizard. Shane doesn't like receiving trash, but gives rotten food that's likely been forgotten for years behind the Joe Mark counter. <laughs> I, I see. I see that you said ironic, but I thought you said iconic for a second. And honestly, both are kind of both are pr pretty fitting. Shane is iconic. Is iconic in the terms of like internet slang? Where you say like someone or something is iconic. Is that new slang or is that old slang? I feel like I'm seeing it more lately in the uh, in the sweeping era of TikTok. Of people calling things iconic. But I feel like it's might have been around for a while too. So I don't honest, I honestly don't know. I don't know where iconic lands in the internet timeline. I always group iconic and cringe together, as far as, like, internet part Lance goes. I feel like they're from a similar time period, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Iconic is an old word, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I know the word itself, as in, like, you know, when it was first input in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. That was a long time ago. Iconic's just been, been a word for a very long time, but as far as its use in internet culture... I feel like it's, uh, it's still on the cutting edge. Iconic has been a mainstream trendy thing to say since I was in middle school. You know what? Fair enough. Are you saying that Iconic itself is Iconic? Or is it cringe to say Iconic? I don't know. I feel like kind of old when it comes to the internet, even though I'm I'm not that, not really that. I mean, I guess I am old compared to the Zoomers and stuff of nowadays. But I I always feel old, and I, I'm just trying to learn. I'm just trying to learn chat. Whenever I see some new like internet slang pop up that I've never heard before. I'm always, like, scrambling to try and figure it out before I, like, have to come on stream and someone uses it in chat and I have to pretend like I know what it means. That doesn't really happen that often because I think most of the people in chat are also kind of in that same boat as me. Where we're not on TikTok all the time. So we don't see, uh, we don't see what's on fleek or whatever. I think on fleek is actually like a really old one too. <laughs> Funnily enough. Language is interesting stuff, that's what I'm saying. I'm definitely an etymology stan. Evelyn with the cookies, thank you. I'm waiting to see Emily go on a tear here at some point. I know she will, I know she has it in her to, to make a comeback here. She's going to take her sweet time by the looks of things. I haven't heard on fleek in ages, my lord. 
Doesn't have something to do with eyebrows. <laughs> I got flashbacks to the 2010s with that one from On Fleek. It is an old one, I think. That's what I'm saying, though. I don't. I don't even know. Like, I can't even use something that is uh, that's more trendy these days because I'm not in those spheres enough to know what the heck is trendy. Like one that I've seen cropping up a lot in like YouTube comments and on Twitter and stuff. On the, in the in the rare occasion that I actually go on Twitter, is people will say like my brother in Christ followed by something. I'm not a huge fan of that one. Not because I'm, like, religious or anything like that. I'm actually very much not religious, but it seems like, I don't know, kind of offensive, maybe, to people who are who like, who are Christian. Just to, you know, like, adopt that phrase and use it as a meme thing. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. But I'm only human. I've laughed, I've laughed at the occasional use case of it, for sure. Is the tracker automatic or manual? Hello, Blade. It is a manual tracker. I have 18 different hotkeys to keep in track of. I've <laughs> I've got a legend by the side of my computer to keep track of all of it. If I could have automated the process, then that would have been better for sure. New Year, New Egg Festival, by the way. Uh, Mayor Lewis. So the tracker that you see on screen is susceptible to human error. And I don't doubt that it's already succumbed to some human error at some point here, and, we, and none of us have noticed yet. But I'm doing my best to, to maintain it. Speaking of old internet slang, I like your shoelaces. I don't think I've heard of that one, but it does make me think of the, the Phineas and Ferb song about aglets. A-G-L-E-T, don't forget it. I think that's how it goes. At least part of it. You can extract it out of my save once it's done if you want to confirm the numbers. I didn't know that that was like a thing you could do, Blade. That's kind of cool. I, I didn't realize that it like tracked all that in the actual uh, in the actual save file. Although this is the ma the mail that we've only started tracking the mail as of this stream. Like everything on the stream that we now started at zero, right? So, comparing that to the numbers in the save file probably wouldn't work out because those numbers would be for lifetime, right? Including the 20 years before we started checking the mail this stream. But maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. That's what I would assume, though, but I guess we could, we, I mean, we could do the math and, like, figure out... I don't know, either way it would be interesting to compare the two to see how much mail we got before this whole 90 plus year uh, slog of sleeping. Uh, Linus is F2, good to go. It would only be what's in, what, what is in the mail at the start of the day. That's what I figured. By the way, Blade, were you, like, aware of this fact that, uh, cause we've gotten, every time we get the Feast of the Winter Star thing, it says that Clint is the one we're giving a gift to. Like, it's been, without fail, Clint every single year. I thought it would keep track of, like, you know, every, like, previous year, and we get to see, like, all the people that we missed, but I think it's just, like, what people said in chat towards the start of this when we first discovered that, that it's more likely that Clint is the one we're supposed to give to a gift to this year, and, uh, and that's just what it defaults to. I wasn't aware that that was a thing, and it was very cool to, to like, learn that. I love learning new things about this game at all times. And this challenge has been nothing if not uh, fraught with discoveries for me. It re-rolls the person when the mail is looked at. As it is seated, you get the same result. You know what? Fair enough. Touché, as we were saying earlier. Robin's a little F7. My big, dumb, realistic question is, is how the mail is still intact. All of that food must have spoiled by now. I mean, there are many different logistical questions that it's just better not to ask about this, this mail process. 
But where I would probably start to break it down, if I were to tear it down with logic and facts, is, uh... Our, how is our mailbox... How is our house not buried under literally all of this mail? <laughs> Uh, Pam is F5. I almost hit 4. I was almost trying to boost Emily's numbers artificially. But one other thing, Blade, since you are here, that you may or may not know the answer to, is male literally just random like are these numbers on the side are they going to sort of even out by the end of uh 100 years because I, I would have to imagine after 100 years of mail that the numbers would pretty well even out and that's what you would expect if it were completely random every single time or are there people that are more likely to send you mail because right now emily's not putting up a great performance it should even out that's what i figured question what the when Question what the Winter Star Mail looks like in your Collections tab. I can go have a look at that. Collections tab. Letters. Wait, where's, where's, so where's Winter Star Mail here? It's a, a gift, a, we got all the, all the gifts, all the gifts, Caroline's Tropical Ingredients. Gus needs a coconut. Willie's Backroom Invitation, Willie's, Willie's in the backrooms. And he's Apology. Sorry about what happened in my place yesterday. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Pam needs help. You're telling me. Sam's thank you. Where's 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 the Feast of the Winter Star? It's first page. Gunther's note. Is it top here? Backpacks from Pierre's. Demetrius's study on toxins. Evelyn's thank you. Thank you from Lewis. Pierre's craving. What? I really want a plate of sashimi. I forgot about that. Evelyn's surprise from dad number four. <laughs> Feast of the Winter Star reminder. Did you get a gift for your secret friend? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Is that supposed to be like that? Although, wait, so, because we're, we're almost on Feast of the Winter Star here, so like if I go through these next few. Uh, okay, hold on. Give it a second here. Just give it a second. Give it a second. So yeah, we get to here. That's our that's our Feast of the Winter Star reminder. Then we go in. And I gotta find it again. Feast of the Winter Star. Where was it? Festival of Ice Notice. Night Market. Feast of the Winter Star reminder. It's still question marks. New, new NPC just dropped. New gift for your secret friend, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. So I'm assuming this is because, like, on this year that we're on, year 112, exclamation point year, that we actually we just don't know yet. Unless it is going to be Clint for real and we're getting a sneak peek of it. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder if this would work. You don't read the letter from the Winter Star, sleep till next year then read the letter. I don't know. That's I think that's I think that's what I what I wondered at the start when we were getting Clint like four years in a row at, to begin with. Is whether like if I slept to the next year and then like like I basically what you just said, Blade, like wait until uh until the winter star has passed and the next year has already come before checking that mail and seeing if that would uh, change anything. Either way, interesting discoveries all over the place. A little chocolate cake from Evelyn. Chat, have you ever had like a piece of chocolate or a piece of chocolate cake or something sitting in your fridge or wherever for a decent amount of time and then like when you like go to to see if you want to eat it? It's got like dry. It's got like flakes of like sort of lighter brown chocolate on it. Or I don't. That's the thing. I don't know what it is. Is is it chocolate or is it something else? Because it's not mold. I'm pretty sure. 
But it's what happens when chocolate starts to go stale or bad. It becomes like weird and white and powdery. Anyone know what I'm talking about? And follow up question, does anyone know what the heck is going on with that? It's called Bloom. En enlighten me. Enlighten me, what is Bloom? When it comes to chocolate. Oxidized? Is, is it chocolate rust? You telling me chocolate can rust? That's kind of cool. Oxidized chocolate. That's kind of, that's, you know what? I wouldn't have thought of that for some reason, even though it's kind of obvious in retrospect that that's probably what the, what the process would have to be. Chocolate rust. That's so, that sounds so metal. It's a chemical reaction. I love that. Who knew that chocolate could get rusty? Chocolate rust, not gonna lie, kind of got the same energy as stomach bag. I give a I give a gift to Clint this year. Oh, did you just check my save file for that uh, blade? Year one twelve is a year. Okay, so it so it seems to that does seem to work. Like if you like go if you read your feast of the winter star mail from the previous year or from a previous year, the next year then you get sort of a sneak peek at who you're supposed to give one to. There you go. Blade has answered our questions as per usual. A lot of things oxidize without rusting. Can we just call it rust, though? I kind of I kind of like uh, the idea of just calling things that oxidize just like blank rust. Like chocolate rust sounds so funny to me. Fill your stomach bag with chocolate rust. Hashtag not medical advice. Hashtag not legal advice either. Your cells rust? Is that just aging? Google says it's from, from fat migrating to the outside. Is it pulled out by the oxida oxi oxidation process? Or does the fat just, like, get tired of being in there and decides to leave? Oh, have a good one there, Oceana. Thank you for tuning in for a little bit. Appreciate it. You take care. Double back-to-back -back Jody. Jody telling the greatest dark horse story of all time. She was the one that no one believed in at the start of this mail run, and now she's, you know, making a comeback for sure. She's making a play for, for being our best friend now. Welcome back, Spicy. Oils and chocolate might go bad, but don't eat those. You can usually smell that. Bloom chocolate might just feel off texture or a bit stale. I've definitely eaten this the bloomed chocolate before. And it's not a it's not something I would recommend versus, you know, like fresh chocolate. But it's not that bad either. I have also smelled bad chocolate though, if you leave it there for like way, way, way too long. It gets kind of that musty smell. Secret friend is Clint, by the way. How did Linus get fried calamari from the mountain lake? June, we're on the same wavelength. I asked that very same question near the beginning of the stream. Just doesn't just doesn't check out. Does Linus have a secret deep fryer behind his tent? If so, I think the fire marshal might have something to say about that. Finally, the thunderstorm allows you to come online. Or not. Hopefully everything's okay for you, young radio. Stay safe. Thunderstorms like that can be very scary when they're like knocking out your power left, right, and center. I haven't had uh, to endure a thunderstorm of that capacity in a while. Like, I could not tell you the last time that my power went out. I'm really trying to think if there was a time in recent memory where it happened. I don't think there was. Like, I think it's been like several years. 
New Year New Egg Festival. Lol, this is epic. Hey, thank you, uh, Fluffy, Fluffy Fra Fractal Shard. Fluffy Fractal Shard, that's a great name. I'm glad you're enjoying the, the epicness of opening a hundred years worth of mail in Stardew Valley. I don't know if epic is the word I would necessarily use to describe it. Actually, you know what? I think epic is kind of, in a roundabout way, the way this should be described. Because epic, when you really break it down to brass tacks, it just means like a like a monumental thing, right? Like oh like the like the epic of like like the Odyssey is an epic poem, right? Because it's just a big, long, massive poem. And this is nothing. This whole mail living process is nothing if not extremely long and arduous. This is an epic endeavor, I would say. I think you're, you're you hit the nail on the head with that one. This is truly epic. It's a it's a biblical amount of mail. <laughs> Big and long, yeah, exactly. The long, arduous, involved, insane process. Something that only the truly dedicated, insane players of Stardew Valley would undertake. Give me a thumbs up in chat if, like, if you were playing Stardew Valley on your own and had to go through a hundred years of mail like this for whatever reason. Give me a thumbs up if you would, like, uh, be keeping all these gifts. Or if you would just be trashing everything. Like, how many of you out there, give me a, th give me a thumbs up if you'd be doing it more or less the same way I'm doing it right now. Give me a thumbs down if you'd be, uh, you know, just, like, spam clicking through it. Outside the context of, you know, streaming. I'm not gonna lie, outside the context of streaming, I probably wouldn't be going, you know, this hard into it. Unless I was doing it for, for scientific purposes. Keep, but you would spam click, that's fair. I guess, yeah, at the end of the day, knowing now that, uh, that the game itself tracks the number of mail in the save file, and that's a number I could just, like, go and find after the fact, maybe it would have been better to just, you know, check that before I went on this long mail endeavor, then do it, and then, you know, come back and check it and find the difference between the two in order to, to see, but... Either way, I've made my bed, I'm gonna lie in it. I've got this nice nifty little overlay here. I've jerry-rigged my own, uh... My own weird stream setup here. And I'm gonna see it through. Gosh darn it. Even if you were streaming it, yeah. Hey, everything is content, baby. Everything is content. This is the peak of that saying right there. Everything is content. What you're watching slash probably just listening to right now is, is literally content. It's literally content. I am excited to see the day where we finally get that message. Like, I have no idea when it's going to come. When it just says, like, you have no mail. When it's no longer mail time, and then we'll, we'll all be, we'll all send a nice 07 salute to the mail. Uh, Kent is nine. There we go. Still a long ways away. I don't think it's as gargantuan, gargantuan of an endeavor as the cactus fruit endeavor. I think this is going to go considerably faster than that. But it does have echoes of that sort of thing, right? giving us all a reason to be here. It is nice, you know, just nice little podcast chat room type situation. I'm down to be the host for that. I hope that uh, Clint doesn't, or not Clint, but Gus doesn't expect me to return all the cookware for his like uh, bean hot pots that he keeps sending me, because he sends me the whole dang pot. Like how much money is he investing in buying all these, like, large 
cast iron pots to put the bean hot pots in. Just, just to send them to me and never get them back ever. In fact, I don't even, like, have the capacity to return them if I wanted to. Chloe straight up eats them. Like, whole. I don't get it, man. Just one of the many logical fallacies of what's going on right now, I suppose. Emily making making a little bit of a comeback, maybe? Clint can just make another one. Brew. Brewing. At least this way you don't have to do flash warning. The flash isn't as bad. That's true. Like, it's a, it's a much slower process. Because I have to look and see, like, who sent the mail. And I have to go down and hit the hotkey. And move on to the next one. There's definitely not as much of a, like, a seizure warning needed for this. If any at all. Emily? You know what? She's starting to... She's starting to be buttered up, I think. You know what I think probably happened is Emily has not been sending that much mail to us over the per first uh, several years of our siesta, of our hibernation. Because... We were making, we were making, by our absence, this is my, this is my headcanon here. By our absence over those years, Haley was getting very, like, downtrodden and depressed from not having been able to see us for so long. And so Emily was kind of giving us the cold shoulder for all that time because, like, uh, because she feels bad for her sister, obviously. She's a good sister that way. But now, when she's going to start making a comeback... That's her, like, trying to barter with us. She, she's moved on to that stage of grief, the bargaining phase, right? Maybe Haley has, and she's, like, getting Emily to send mail on her behalf because she doesn't want to send us mail. She doesn't want to seem desperate that way. And so Emily's mail is going to try and coax us out of the farmhouse during our long, many years long sleep. I don't know. Food for thought. Food for thought, for sure. I'm writing the fanfiction live right now. Cricket will do it live. Jody is number eight. Eight hearts would apply to Shane, too. Is Emily lower since she only has eight hearts with you? Yeah, I guess, yeah, no, it, it, that probably shouldn't matter, because, uh, like you said there, Shane also has eight hearts. They're the only two marriage candidates that send you anything in the mail, huh? And that probably, I would imagine, has to do with the fact that they weren't always marriage candidates. Like, in the first few updates of Stardew Valley, the first few versions, you couldn't marry Shane or Emily, and they were added as the result of a poll, I'm pretty sure. So that's probably a carryover from, from those days, I would have to guess. I was to check the save for mail for each receive for each person, it would have to be the save for today. The save doesn't track how many times mail was sent from a villager. I got you. Shane and Emily have a lower chance of sending mail. Interesting. I mean Shane Shane's still doing better than Emily, that's for that's for darn sure. I do have a backup of the perfection save for anyone who might be worried that I'm like spending more money and all this stuff after Beating the challenge and ruining the save in some capacity. I do have a backup from the actual day where the challenge was completed, so no worries there. We can always uh, go back to that if we feel the need, if I'm compelled to. Quick rebate from Pierre. All right. Uh, Pam is F5. Another rebate from Pierre. How much money has Pierre sent us by this point? We're almost... I think we started around 330000 before the start of the mail. Or the start of... Mail time. And then... Uh, we're almost at 400000 we're, we're closing in on that $70,000 mark from just mail from Pierre and Louis. Just kind of nutty. Game chooses a random NPC you have met and then does a heart level times 10% roll to see if they should send something. Then you get mail from them if they have an entry for the mail in the data files. So because of the 8 heart restriction for Emily and Shane, they do have a lower chance. Okay, so that does make sense then. 
Interesting. Does that mean if I go if I go gone and given them each a bouquet and leveled them up to ten hearts, then I would have had they would have had the same chance as every other villager. Uh Sandy is a little F eight there. That would only make sense to me, right? Nightbot reminded me of the hydration. Thank you, Nightbot. Will my relationship with Krobus deteriorate because I just stand in front of the mailbox all day? I don't think so. As long as I talk to him at least once a day. Speaking of, I'm going to go ahead and it's 6.30 p.m. just from checking mail. I think I'm going to go ahead and save the day here just in case of a crash or something weird like that. How long do you think this will actually take? Honestly, Blade, I have no earthly idea. <laughs> I have no tangible idea of how long this takes per year or how long this uh how many years i have to do total i haven't gone and done the math for it specifically all i know is it's gonna take more than one stream that's for sure <laughs> i'm probably where are we at we're just a little over three hours right now i'm probably gonna do a four hour stream for this one and then uh we'll call it and then i'll probably pick it up again next week once i get into because like i said i want to do probably three streams a week kind of thing and we'll go with that. All right, um, six for George. We love the outfit. Thank you, Lisa. It's 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 postal casual, what we're calling it. At the speed I'm going, it's likely to take longer than the sleeping. I'm fully I'm fully prepared for. I'm fully expecting that. I don't think, I don't I don't anticipate this being a speed run of this mail. Especially because I'm trying to track it this way. Like, if I was just speed clicking through everything, even then, it would take a massive amount of time. But, uh, the fact that I'm, like, tracking it all on the side and taking pauses in between to, you know, read chat and all that stuff. This ain't, uh, it's, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Which I'm totally fine with. That said, being here at this, at the start of this, at this egg festival, which is effectively the start of a new male year, why don't I... It's, I'll, I'll, I'm going to chat. I'm going to look away from you for a moment. I'm going to focus solely on the game. And we're going to speed run a year of mail here. Watch me speed run. Someone, someone time me on this. All right. Three, two, one, go. We're, we're speed running this year. We're speed running. Seeing how fast I can do it if I'm just paying attention to the game and nothing else. The game and the hotkeys. The game and the hotkeys. I got to make sure I hit the right hotkeys, though, is the problem. Gus, that's a seven. I like when they do the... And they have back-to-back -back same villager because it makes it easy for the hotkey presses. All right, Evelyn is a five. We're going in. Shane is F9. F9. Jody is eight. That one's I, I've, I've fully internalized at this point. Pretty much all of them I've fully internalized, I think. And hopefully I'm doing it right Doing it right here. So we're going until we see the next egg festival message. That's, that's when this speed run ends. Someone time me. I probably should put up a speed run timer of my very own if I wanted this to be any accurate in any capacity. But... I'll take what I can get. I think I accidentally pressed F6 there as well as F7, so pardon me if I gave one accidentally to Pierre. You know what? I'm just going to assume that I did, because it, it definitely felt like I did. And I'm just going to let that let that go. All right, Clint is is a 2. I haven't had him in a little while. F8 for Sandy. We're going. I'm going as fast as I can, chat. I promise. I'm just, I'm focusing. I'm focusing as hard as I can. And somehow I'm still going, like, so slow. I feel like this is this is the. I feel like I've gone faster when I'm not even like paying attention to what the heck I'm doing. I feel like now that the pressure's on, I'm like, oh my gosh, where's the hot key? How do I press F7? How do I press F7? Where is it on my keyboard? F9? What the heck is it? The, the, these keys are so weird. Who's who assigned these keys? Whose whose idea was this? <laughs> Why am I checking a hundred years of mail in the first place? What am I doing with my life? But you know what? It's all it's all about the experience. It's all about the experience. And the cactus fruit. Argon cactus in chat. George with the six. Okay. My friend Gus with the seven. Thank you. Jody with the eight. Six, seven, eight. Kent coming up next. No, it's a five. We're going back down the other way. Festival of Ice. We're into winter. Five again. All right. All right. Here we go. Night market already. That's amazing. That's amazing luck. The RNG on this run is, is incomparable. Triple Sandy. Oh my god. 
Sandy truly our best friend. Winter Star, all right. F9 for Shane. Sandy again, the quadruple in winter. She's actually, you know, so thirsty for us. All right, Evelyn with a five. And the Pierre with the F6. We're going in at Kent with the nine. Kent with the nine. Can I get F5 for Pam? F5 for Pam and F just a regular five for Evelyn. We're so close, chat. We're so close. We're so close. Wizard, give me that. Give me that, Jade. Give me that freaking frozen tier as well. Time. Time. Someone time me. That's time right there. Y'all in chat, just, just spam an exclamation point jelly, an exclamation point horse. I appreciate that. You know what? 238. About three minutes. That seems, you know, fairly accurate. Finally 100. I can go to bed. Oh, did Sandy... Oh, Sandy broke 100. Look at that. Congrats to Sandy. Can we get some, uh... I don't know, fireworks in chat for Sandy? Sandy being the first one to send over 100 pieces of mail. Two and a half minutes. Pretty nice. Now, if I could just keep up that rate for the entire thing, then we'd be... We'd be pretty good. That said, I'm probably not going to do that. That's a lot less than sleeping for a year. I mean, that's true. That's true, actually. And you put it in the context of comparing against sleeping for a year, not so bad. So if we were going strictly on a, you know, year-by-year -year basis, and it all averaged out to around three minutes or so, you know, it'd be it'd be a pretty decent amount of time. Maybe Sandy and Emily are collaborating on gifts and sending them together sometimes. They're teaming up like it's Mario Kart Double Dash. I haven't played it or even like thought about that game in a little while. I I wish I owned it. There are so many games that I've played at friends' houses or rented from Blockbuster for some time back in the day that I wish I owned. Because I always think about them and think about how much fun I had playing them. The one that always comes to mind first and foremost for me is Kirby's Air Ride. Anyone ever play that game? That's such a fun game. I think that was GameCube. In fact, I'm pretty confident that that was GameCube. It's so good and it's it's really got the, the completionist angle for me locked down. Because it's got that whole big long... It's got like a big grid of achievements that you can unlock. And they're, like, all pretty hard, or, like, many of them are pretty hard, honestly. We love Kirby's Air Ride. Kirby's Air Ride is a fantastic game. I just wish it was easier to play in this day and age. I mean, I could probably, like, uh, you know, resort to more nefarious slash less legal means of playing it. As opposed to going on eBay and trying to track down a copy for who even knows how much money. It might even be... I I've never looked into it. It might be the modern day... Earthbound. Although I guess Earthbound is the modern day Earthbound, based on just, you know, buy sell prices. Kirby's Air Ride is a good game, it's just a shame it doesn't have a real story. I was totally fine with that. I think the gameplay for Kirby's Air Ride bolsters it beyond the need for a story of any kind. I can definitely understand the disappointment of going into like a Kirby game and it not having that. Because many Kirby games do have a, like a campaign mode and that sort of stuff. And I don't think... Does it doesn't even have like a campaign mode? There's like so many different game modes in Kirby's Air Ride that I don't really... Like I remember having a great time with it, but I don't remember the full ins and outs of every game mode. All I remember is going to my friend's house and we boot it up and... Uh, and we go up against each other in that sort of like city trial mode. Whatever it is, where you're just going around the city fighting each other and picking up random random carts and stuff, or I guess not carts, I don't know what they were called. The things that you ride on the stars. Without the gameplay, just platforming and solid. Loved exploring the city. That city was so good, right? Kirby Superstar takes me back. I haven't played very many Kirby games, I'm not gonna lie to you. I played Kirby's Air Ride, I played Kirby and the Crystal Shards all the way through. Fantastic game, for sure. Highly recommended. And I've played Kirby's Epic Yarn, actually, on my on my YouTube channel back in the day. I did a, did a Let's Play of that one. Although, I don't know if some people don't count that as a true Kirby game, because I don't think it was originally a Kirby game. 
We got the the Doki Doki, almost said Doki Doki Literature Club, but Doki Doki Panic Treatment. Kirby 64 was your first and favorite. That, that's Crystal Shards, right? That's the only Kirby game on the N64. Is this correct, or am I misremembering, misrepresenting the Kirby fan base? Heaven forbid. New Egg Festival, New Year. Anyone keeping track of how many years we've been going through, by the way? Because I honestly have no idea. <laughs> I was originally tracking how many years I had gone through by, like, counting up the Egg Festival invitations, but, uh kind of gave up the ghost on that one pretty early on. I feel like we're maybe like 15 years in or something. That sounds like a reasonable number, but maybe it's more than that. Maybe it's less than that. I honestly don't know. It's just kind of a ballpark estimate. Only Monica? I think you mean just Monica? Just Monica? Just Monica? Just Monica? Just, just a Monica? And I love Doki Doki Literature Club. It was such a fun experience playing it blind for the first time. I didn't do it on YouTube or anything like that. I just did it on my on my own. I know, right? Playing playing a game not for an audience? Unheard of. Just for my own enjoyment of the game? What is this? What is this witchcraft? But it was a fantastic time. You have to be, you know, you have to take that, the, the warning on the Steam page, because, like, it's, if you look at the game and you know literally nothing about the, sort of, like, the legacy of the, of Doki Doki Literature Club, if you just look at it based on its content alone, then, uh, you might be like, what the heck is the deal with this game? It just looks like a weird dating simulator. And you know what it kind of is, but also you gotta take that warning on the Steam page about, like, this game is not for younger audiences or for the faint of heart. It's got, like, the psychological thriller tag on it. You gotta take those ones to heart and be ready for for the other shoe to drop, as it were. No spoilers, though. No spoilers. I would definitely not want to spoil that experience for anyone out there. Got kind of like a, like a first-time Undertale experience as well. Like, the first time I played Undertale on my own through that blind, that was a magical experience in and of itself. A little bit of Monica in my life. Any interest in Core Keeper? I hear good things. It's been recommended to me a few times. I honestly haven't looked into it, though. Give me an elevator pitch for Core Keeper, anyone who's, like, played the game or knows much about it. What's what what's the gameplay like? What e what even is it? Cuz I honestly just don't know. I should do my own research and and figure that out, I'm sure. But if you had to if I was in an elevator with you for 30 seconds, cuz I think that's the, where the term elevator pitch originates from. And you had to sell me on the game in that 30 seconds that we're in the elevator together cuz I can't go anywhere. I'm a captive audience. How would you do that? I watched the playthrough of the game and on the Game Grumps playthrough. The reaction was priceless. It is, D Doki Doki Literature Club is definitely one of those games that's fun to watch streamers react to if they have no knowledge going into it. 100%, which is why I probably would never play it on stream because I already know the ins and outs of the game. So I think watching it would just be kind of like going through the motions for me. But it would be fun to re revisit that world for sure. See, from the Steam description for Core Keeper, uh, explore an endless cavern of creatures, relics, and resources in a mining sandbox adventure for one to eight players. Mine, build, fight, craft, farm to unravel the mysteries of Core. It sounds like a cross between The Binding of Isaac and Minecraft, which is a crossover that I wasn't sure I needed. I don't know. Is it like a 3D game or is it like a 2D party? Not that that'll make a huge difference on whether I'd play it or not. I just want to have, you know, the, the right expectations going into it when I go and look it up. It's a 2D game. 
Corgi. New Year, New Egg Festival. Is the Corgi the official dog of the royal family? Doesn't, like, the, the Queen of England have a bunch of Corgis or something like that? Or isn't... isn't I don't know, is that a meme thing, or is that, like, a real non-meme factual thing? Because I always associate Corgis with the royal family. But I don't know if that's just my weird... Like, a, like a weird sort of short circuit in my in my memory banks. Did I hit the right number there? I don't even know. Hopefully chat will correct me if I didn't. Um, Sandy is showing up the rest of the villagers. You're absolutely not wrong about that. Sandy is our best friend. Coming in very, very loud and clear here. Alright, uh, Demetrius. Welsh Corgi. Yes, it's real. It's true. Why corgis? Why do you why do you think the do you think that the royal family just likes corgis because they're corgis, and obviously you should like them? Or is there like a historical reason that corgis are the dog of choice, the breed of choice for for royalty? Kind of like how the color purple is associated with royals because it's uh it was a hard color to obtain in ye olden times. Just the queen? Does she just have that many corgis that it extends to the whole royal family? Or does she only have one corgi? They may have been domesticated there. <laughs> Were there wild corgis? That sounds so funny to me. I always assumed that corgis were like the uh were a result of like uh like breeding dogs, right? Cuz many many dog breeds nowadays are the result of like the thousands and thousands of years of domesticating dogs and breeding them for various traits that are, you know, that people like and think are cute. But are corgis like not that? Are, do cor did corgis live in the wild? That's so funny to me. I'm just picturing like a wild corgi, <laughs> and it's <laughs> like a corgi, like a, just a, a vicious little corgi. Like I just can't picture it trying to like scavenge, like hunt and scavenge for itself. Because corgis are tiny, right? Unless I'm thinking of the wrong kind of dog. That's so funny to me. All dog breeds are selectively bred. I guess nowadays that's that's true. There's no dogs that are the same now as they were compared to like wild variants back in uh, back like thousands of years ago. Wild corgi will bite your ankles. Deadly parentheses. Watching a corgi herd sheep is hilarious. Do the sheep even move? <laughs> if I was a sheep and I was being chased by a corgi, I might just like stand there and watch it like uh, like bonk into my fur. I'm sure a corgi can be vicious when it really wants to be. <laughs> oh, sheep herding corgis. The sheep look terrified. If I was a sheep, I might just, you know, pull a goat instead and just fall over, become dead weight. How's the corgi supposed to move me then? They'll probably just start biting me, huh? Corgis and pugs are mortal enemies, by the way. I've seen it. Source, dude, does just trust me. Aren't corgis herding dogs for cattle? I thought that was sheep dogs. That's why they're called sheep dogs. Well, I guess for cattle. I mean, are, are there are there dogs that herd cows? I mean, I guess cattle is not exclusively cows. Now that I think about it. Um, sorry, I was I was thinking about corgis. Forgot to press the hotkey. 
Based on my calculations, we've gone through roughly 24 years already. That's not, that's not too bad. This might only take, you know, like three or four streams at this rate. Piece of the Winter Star, by the way, we gotta give something to Clint. What are we gonna give to Clint, chat? You know what would be the rudest thing is after all of this, going through all of this mail, then like going to the Feast of the Winter Star, having seen so many times that we're supposed to give Clint a gift and then just like not giving him anything. Just like not even showing up. <laughs> even after all these reminders. That would be the most rude thing I could possibly do, but I kind of want to do it because it's Clint. Collected around 1,560 presents and get 65 presents a year. I would assume the 65 presents a year is an average because there's, I mean, it's, it's just a chance, but... Very interesting t statistics. Thank you, Chagoje, for the, uh, for the intel. I'll be interested to see how the numbers shake out when everything is said and done and we reach the final piece of mail. When mail time is finally over. New Year, New Egg Festival. I am still glow- go I'm, I'm, I'm not glowing, but I am still going, Clover Quartz. Do we know what year we're at? Uh, Chao J just said that we've been through about 24 years of mail so far, roughly. An estimation. And we didn't actually technically have 100 years of mail to go through. I think it was actually more like 90 years. Splitting hairs at that point, but that should give you some idea. Making decent headway at the very least. We glowing. I mean, I am wearing an Iridium band. Not in real life. That would probably be toxic. Iridium's a real metal. So, could you make a real life Iridium band, chat? Has anyone ever done that? Or is Iridium actually, like, not a safe metal to work with? I feel like it's probably fine. Well, depend. I, I don't know. I don't know what, like, the melting temperature of it is, I guess. Maybe if you, like, put war an Iridium band, it has a low melting temperature, and it would just, like, melt against your skin. That would probably be a bad time. Isn't it soft? I mean, gold is also soft, right? But they make gold rings all the time. Seems like it's, uh, it's just begging to be made into some kind of jewelry. Iridium is an element, but it's a metal element. It's a, a metallic one, isn't it? Or am I not thinking straight? I mean, any, any, any element can be a, well, not a metal, I guess, but a solid. Iridium's gotta be a metal, though. I'll take Iridium socks, please. Do you hate your feet? No judgments. It's incredibly dense, but very brittle. Kind of like me. Don't think about that too hard. Why did I think it was soft? I don't know. Does anyone work with Iridium on a day-to-day -day basis? I feel like I don't know that much about Iridium. It's probably not purple in real life, I would tell you that. But maybe. Maybe, maybe Concerned Ape did his research, did his homework, and actually, you know, some of the things in Stardew Valley relating to Iridium are like they track to real life. Although something tells me it might, there might be some liberties taken with it based on the fact like, you know, radioactive bars exist and we're not dead. From smithing like what is essentially probably pure uranium in a furnace with zero protective equipment. I don't think that's how it works in real life. It's not even close to being purple. That's like an Etsy project waiting to happen. Someone get on Pinterest and start making Iridium rings. You'll make a killing in the Stardew Valley community, I'll tell you that right now. Especially if you paint them purple. Put a little, like, Junimo ornamentation on it. 
Of course, I suppose that uh, requires some knowledge of metallurgy and, like, dueling. Which I don't know if that's th those are the most common skills to have amongst, you know, the average layperson. But someone listening out there must have at least, you know, somewhat adjacent skills, maybe. Maybe he based Iridium on the Meteors, because Concerned Ape wanted to give them a special ore. I'm trying to think of what other ore he could have gone with. Like, obviously, like, like you got your Minecraft making, making armor out of diamonds. I think Iridium is probably more realistic in that capacity. Like, making armor out of pure diamonds, probably not the play. Both very expensive and also probably extremely ineffectual. Because, like, how would you even move? <laughs> You'd be like that kid in a Christmas story. With his arms, like, all stretched out to the side because he's wearing seven winter coats. There we go. Back at it again with Pierre and his rebate program. It's just silvery like most other metals. Diamonds are very hard, though, but maybe too hard. That's what I'm saying. What temperature does mercury have to be for it to be solid? Because obviously, like, I know, like, at room temperature, mercury is very famous, obviously, for being, uh, like, a liquid metal. Like, it's the thing you put in thermometers, and it's all, it's got... I don't know, every, everyone kind of has, like, a mental picture of what mercury looks like, I think. But how cold does it have to get for it to become solid? Any Wikipedia divers in chat want to enlighten me on this? Hey there, raccoon child. Welcome, welcome. Just literally just thinking about how I missed Argon's live streams. Well, speak of the devil and he shall appear. In this case, I'm the devil. Make of that what you will. Happy to see you. It's been pen nibs and thermocouplers. It's got an extremely high melting temperature, so not great for jewelry. That's iridium, I'm, I'm assuming. Not mercury. Mercury is definitely not great for jewelry. I'll tell you that right now. I don't even need to do the... Uh, I don't even need to do the, the math on that one. For the research, I've already done it by virtue of being alive. Minus 38.83 degrees Celsius for Mercury. Just like a brisk day in Canada. Now, minus 38 is pretty chilly, even in Canada. It has gotten that cold outside sometimes. Wait a second, do... If it gets that cold... Like, on a day where it gets, like, really, really cold... Like that. And you have a thermometer outside. Does the mercury inside freeze in the thermometer? Like, obviously, most places where you have, like, an outdoor thermometer like that probably don't need to worry about it getting that cold on a regular basis. But on the rare chance that it does? Or is there some kind of, like, insulation protecting the mercury from freezing? Because that's not so cold that it could never get that cold. I've I've experienced days that are minus 38. Not often, but I have. Got me thinking now. Every freeze for the Winter Star you've gotten is Clint. It is true. I think it's just uh, we've deduced that that's because Clint is the one we're supposed to give a gift to this year in year 112. And that's just, like, a weird interaction with the game that you would never normally see because you're always... You're, most people would check their mail, like, every year or every day, basically any time they see it, so... The more you know... Yes, please don't use Mercury and Jewelry. There's a game that I have for, for the Wii, for the Nintendo Wii console. It's called, like, Mercury Meltdown. I've never heard anyone else talk about it. I picked it up randomly on a school trip to West Edmonton Mall. 
the largest indoor entertainment center on Earth, so I'm told. I just found it in, like, a random shop at West Edmonton Mall. I brought it home and I played it. And I love that game. I still have that. It's a fantastic game. It's basically like a... It's a physics-based platformer puzzle game, to a certain extent. Where you control, like, different colored globs of mercury. And try to navigate them around levels by, like, uh... By, like, tilting them, like, tilting the Wiimote, because it's, like, a, it's a Wii game, so it's got to have those motion controls, you know? Has anyone ever played Mercury Meltdown? If not, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's a stream for a future day. Full of Rockley Smile and Argon's weird games. Mercury is poisonous, very true. But I think if you if you're safe with it, then you can you can handle it in some capacity. At least that's that, that's what Nile Red has told me. Well, he has that one thumbnail where he like sticks his finger in the mercury. I don't know how true to life that is, but probably not advisable if you don't know what you're doing. You have you've played Mercury Meltdown, Pigeon Incorporated. Are you are you gassing me up, or have you actually played Mercury Meltdown? Because I've literally never heard anyone else talk about this game or know of its existence. Part of me thinks it might be like uh, like I might have been the protagonist of some weird creepy pasta that just never panned out. It's got all the trappings of it, right? It's like I found this weird sort of game in the bargain bin of a random store in a place that I hadn't that I'd never been to. And I was compelled to buy it because it looked interesting. And then I brought it home and the Wiimote, like, I don't know, lodged itself in my brain or something overnight because the ghost of the game was, I guess, I guess probably more accurately because Mercury Meltdown, I would be like poisoned by the game somehow over a slow course of time. Like maybe like the game would like seep Mercury out of the, out of the Wiimote into my hand and slowly kill me over time. Mercury Meltdown Remix. There's a remix? Is it on Steam? Like Chuck's Challenge or something like that? Oh, I haven't thought about Chuck's Challenge in a long time either. Ben Drowned Who? When I first read the, the creepypasta for Ben Drowned, um... Because I did actually, I mean, I read the original back when it like first came out and was gaining notoriety. I was right at the age, I don't remember exactly how old I was, um, but I was at the age where I was like just gullible enough to believe that it was a real story, but also like just starting to become skeptical enough that I was like, okay, Maybe not, but like mo I, I like was like 80% on board with thinking that Ben Drowned was a real story. Not long after that, I came to my senses and realized that it could not be a real story. But you know, I still had some of that childlike innocence. I think Ben probably took it from me though. Mercury Meltdown Revolution was the port for the Wii. I played the Revolution version. I didn't even know. I thought it was just called Mercury Meltdown. I still have the game. I should go look at the base sometime. New Egg Festival, by the way. Speaking of toxic metals, lead is just as bad as mercury. Please don't eat it. How wild is that? That, like, lead was in gas for so long, right? Maybe it is still even in gasoline in some places, in some contexts. I don't think it is. I think it's got there's like rules and regulations against that nowadays. But leaded gasoline was kind of like the trendy thing for I don't know like fifty some odd years before anybody knew how bad lead what really was for you. I don't know. I guess most scientists had probably known that lead was bad for you because they're scientists, but the average person like never had any interaction with lead before that booming gasoline industry revolution thing of, of leaded gasoline. 
And so they had no reason to fear. They're just like, ooh, leaded gasoline. That sounds fancy. Carl, go fill up the truck with that newfangled leaded gasoline. Yes, dear. That's my impersonation of a 1950s couple named uh, Carl and Dolores. You might think that's a reference to something. It's literally not. I just made up two, pe two random people for no reason. I'm just quirky like that. I'm not like other streamers. Some aviation fuel is still leaded. That seems bad, because that's, like, like way up in the sky, so it, like, has a, more of a chance to, like, spread out and go over a large section of Earth. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't surprise me that it's still used in some contexts, for sure, but it's, uh, hopefully far, far less than it used to be. I mean, it's definitely far, far less than it used to be, but hopefully far, far less than, like, like, making it below the, the dangerous limit, right? Humans enjoy poisoning themselves in creative ways. Very true. I work at a liquor store. I know this is a fact. I think you can get leaded gas if you have a registered vintage car that is considered an important piece of history. What the heck? Put that thing in a museum. Don't drive it around. Or, like, keep it in your garage or something. Whenever I think of, of vintage cars, because I'm very much not a car person, but anytime the topic gets brought up, I always think of that scene in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where they've, like, driven... The, it's, like, near the end of the movie, where they've driven the car around on, their, on Ferris Bueller's eponymous day off, right? It's like a vintage car that they stole from Cameron's dad's garage or something like that. And they take it back, and then they put it on, like, this thing on, in the floor that, uh... I don't know, it starts spinning the wheels in reverse really fast, but the car stays in place. It's like, it's like wheels that are in the ground, and it starts spinning backwards so that they can, like, reverse the odometer. I think was the idea. I don't know, it's been a while since I've watched the movie. Do things like that really exist? Uh, do, I have, do we have any, like, auto heads in chat? If that's not an offensive term, hopefully. I just kind of, like, pulled it off the top of my head. Just on a pair of blocks? Yeah, that was the idea. Let's see, like, yeah, does that work? Like, maybe, maybe that's just a thing with vintage cars. I feel like in a modern car, if you tried to do something like that, it just, like, wouldn't do anything. I feel like cars have evolved or changed in that time, so maybe it's not to, it absolutely does not do that. Even in those olden type cars. Like it didn't it didn't make sense to me. It's never made sense to me really that like cuz like then couldn't you just like I don't know, you could r run the odometer all the way to zero, all the way to zero by just driving in reverse in like circles for a long time or something like that. Like, why would reversing change the amount that you see on the odometer? Seems kind of backwards to me, no pun intended. Driving in reverse does not make the odometer go backwards. I don't know, maybe I'm putting too much stock into it. It's supposed to be a fun, funny movie. I mean, at the end of it, the car just goes, like, speeding off of the side of the patio and, and, and like, crashes into a million pieces anyway, so... No, pro they probably don't care what the odometer says when the car is literally totaled. Ferris was magic. Ferris Bueller's Day Off was one of my favorite movies for a very long time. I mean, it's still a great movie. I just haven't watched it in so long. i watched so many movies since that it's had, a, had time to sort of level out with other movies that I really like as well. What is Matilda's dad doing then? Matilda is one of those movies that I... I think I watched, like, the first half of it as a child. And I remember it being, like, really scary for some reason. Like, is Matilda a scary movie to a, to a small child? 
Is it not something you should be watching as like, I don't know, when I was, I probably watched it when I was like seven years old or something? Like, I honestly don't, could not tell you the plot of Matilda or anything about it. Anytime, all I know is that anytime the movie is brought up, I have like this weird, like, averse reaction to it. Like, I'm, it's almost like I'm allergic to the idea of thinking about it. Like, I just don't want to think about it. It's like, I don't know what it did to me. I don't know what scene I watched from that movie that made me so averse to thinking about it. But maybe it's time to go back and watch Matilda for real. Matilda is family friendly. I love Matilda, but Miss, Miss Trunchable, is that her? Is that really her name? Miss Trunchable is pretty scary for a small kid. This is a tragedy. You have to watch it all the way through. Child abuse is scary. True. There was a little girl that got thrown by her pigtails. I could be that see that being scary to a little kid. It's probably one of those things like, uh, you know, things that are seen in shadows are easily misunderstood by the mind of a child. Quote Scott Cawthon, I'm pretty sure. Probably one of those scenes where a kid is being put in the chokey. I just, I mean, I don't know what that is, but that sounds bad. <laughs> this is the, why would they call it a chokey? It just screams problematic. I'm afraid, I'm already afraid. I don't want, is, is, is Matilda on Netflix? I'll go watch it. I mean, I'm like an adult now, so like I can... I can handle things. I'll, I'll, I wanted to watch. I was trying to find a way to watch Martyrs for crying out loud, but I couldn't seem to find a way to watch it uh, legally in Canada, <laughs> legally and easily. So, might have to resort to other means. The Chokey was a closet in the principal's office that was made of jagged metal and giant nails in the wall. Yeah, that sounds pretty like not cool. Why well, was it in the principal's office? <laughs> How did they get that past OSHA? Matilda was so scary, who's saying it wasn't? I don't know, maybe it just depends on when you watched it. Maybe I watched it at that perfect uh, threshold for when it would be at its maximum scare pot potential for me. You don't think the principal was consulting OSHA? But they gotta make their inspections every now and again, right? Could it be a tingle of the dark specter? What? Keep it PG-13, please, Lewis. That is not what I remember in the book. There's a Matilda book? Which came first, the movie or the book? The eternal question. There are many cases of people saying, like, when a, when a movie is made about a book, there are many opportunities people say that the book was better. In fact, people have said it so much that it's kind of become like a, like a meme, almost, like where people say the book is better. Is there a, uh, go. I never noticed that, that like, if you try to do that when you got like full stacks in there, they go all, all like 50% opacity on you. That's kind of weird. Are there, can you think of too many cases where the movie was better than the book? Off the top of my head, I can't, I mean, I haven't read that many books, to be fair. Especially not that many books in which movies were eventually based. Hold on, chat. I'm getting I'm getting a Discord message. This may have just derailed things for a second here. <laughs> uh, let me. What was I? What was I even talking about? The Wizard of Oz. Was the Wizard of Oz based on a book? I'll have to message back about that in a second. I'm probably gonna end the stream soon, pretty soon here anyway, so it's fine. I'll check. I'll check back in the mess on the Discord in a second here. Um, The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz was a book, wasn't it? 
Did I already press something for Gus here? I feel like I did, so I'm just gonna skip it. Sorry to all the Gus fans out there if that is not the case. Starting tomorrow. Alright, that's, that's Night Market. We're good. In my opinion, the Martin has a book and film were of sim similar quality. The Martin? The Martin or the Martian? Is that the Matt Damon one, or are you be talking about something else? I really liked The Martian, the movie. That was, a, that was a great movie. If it was based on a book, like, even better. Wizard of Oz was a pretty good book. When was The Wizard of Oz released? Like, 19... Like, because wasn't the movie, like... Well, hold on, because let me think. The Wizard of Oz was a movie that was made several times, right? Like, there's been, there was, like, a really old version of The Wizard of Oz. And then there's The Wizard of Oz that we all kind of know, like, in living color. But even that one's pretty old. How old is The Wizard of Oz book? Blade has me muted, so I can't just tell him what I, what I told chat just now, so... Give me one second. I will message Blade back. He's the one that messaged me on Discord here, so I will check my DMs real quick. In the meantime, just enjoy uh, some some quality mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Let me see here. Just one second, chat. Just sending a quick response back back to Blade here. One second. I know I'm being quiet. I can't. I can't type and speak at the same time. Funnily enough, because I'm supposed to be able to like multitask being a streamer and stuff. Alright, response sent. There we go. Alright, where am I at here? Winter Star, secret friend is Clint. Why am I not surprised? The mail time thing is from Carmen San Diego. Uh, that is from Blue's Clues, in fact. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lisa, you got the Jeopardy question wrong. Is is from what it, the correct answer is what is Blue's Clues? It is actually from the more recent version of Blue's Clues, by the way, like the the rebooted version that that this clip right here. Mail time. I had to I had to rip that from like the more recent version because I couldn't find a good quality recording of the one from like the one that we all know, like Steve way back in the day. Who's Shane again? No, not who's Shane, but which which hockey is Shane? I know who Shane is. I hope anyway. <laughs> Alright. Correct question for Carmen San Diego is where is anyway? <laughs> I need we just got a letter. I can think about I could probably I was honestly Karita, I was thinking about throwing that on the uh on the soundboard. But I couldn't I don't know, what was I gonna do? Play we just got a letter every single time I opened the letter? I wouldn't have a I wouldn't be able to get a word in edgewise. Did I see that Twitter video with Steve? I did. Oh my gosh, it made my heart melt, Jesse. That was that was amazing. For those who aren't in the know, um, Steve of Blues Clues fame, the host of Blues Clues from back in the day, he made a video on Twitter like addressing all of his old fans, and he did it like in character as Steve. And I forget exactly what the content of the video is, but but it was like one of the most wholesome things I've ever freaking seen. I might have to like go watch that again after the stream. Pickle jar rag. You love to hear it. Only the second time I've gotten to hear it this stream. It's not enough. It's just straight up not enough. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. I wonder who it's from. Ingrained in my head for life, honestly. I didn't even watch Blue's Clues and that video was so sweet even for me. That's what I'm saying. He's just like a genuinely very nice guy. 
based on that one video. And I mean, obviously, I don't know. I don't think Steve has any, do, ever done anything to be canceled based on what I know about him. I would assume not. He seems just like a generally, generally and genuinely very loved individual. By pretty much ev anyone who ever talks about him. You never hear anyone diss Steve from Blue's Clues. And that's for good reason. And I'm glad that I'm glad that he's, you know, just really that wholesome. It makes my inner child very, very happy to know that. It was basically, I'm sorry I left like I did, but look how far have you come. I, that's, yeah, that's, that is it. The look how far you've come thing, oh my gosh. Because I think Steve, like, the canonical way he left Blue's Clues was he went to college, right? He went off to college, and I don't know if that was actually, like, a, a literal thing that the actor playing Steve was doing. Is the actor who's played Steve, is his name really Steve, by the way? Or is, is he, like, I don't know, he kind of looks like a Martin to me. basically yeah uh, the video is so sweet I cried definitely go look up the video if you haven't seen it yet I promise you will not be disappointed should ideally probably bring at least one or two tears to your eyes I think what I'm going to do here, chat, because I am nearing the end of uh, the four hours that I kind of wanted to go for for this stream. Basically, my average stream time. I know that I've done several 12-hour streams recently, so it can be easy to forget that four hours was kind of has kind of been the norm for me uh, for most of my streaming career on YouTube here. Streaming career. I make it sound so official. But I'll probably reach the end of this year when we hit our next Egg Festival notification. And then I will wrap up. And we'll pick this up again. I'm not exactly sure when. I'm probably... I'd maybe say Sunday. But I'm not going to put that just in stone. I'm not going to write that in stone just yet. Keep your eyes peeled on the Discord and on the uh, and on the YouTube community put, uh, tab. For when I actually do an official stream schedule. Which I'm planning on releasing. Writing one up and releasing it within the coming few days here. So... Be ready for that, and then hopefully be ready for more consistent and frequent streams. That's the plan, anyway, whether it actually works out that way. Who knows? It remains to be seen. But I'm looking forward to giving it my all. I will always do my best for you guys. To kind of bookend things here, because I started the stream by talking a little bit about how, like, depression has been kicking my butt a little bit over the past little little while since the end of the price of perfection and part of what helps me like beat that legitimately this is going to sound like kind of corny and cheesy but it actually does work is like every so often i'll go through the fan art folder of like all the fan art that you guys have sent me and i'm not gonna lie there have been a, like pretty much every time i do that and i like look through all of it and just uh, you know, sort of like reminisce on it i kind of tear up a little bit like honestly like just one of the most wholesome heartwarming things that I've seen I never thought that that amount, that amount of like I don't know <laughs> it's, it's just it's just so cool to see so thank you for helping me through that and not just the fan artists but the community in general just thinking about it as a whole makes me feel very warm and fuzzy inside We're nearing the end of this one here. Found this in a drawer somewhere. How many battery packs does Pam have just lying around in her drawers? All right, there's our egg festival. I don't know how many years that is. Oh, perfect timing too. Our inventory is literally full. We still have a lot of freaking mail to go through here. <laughs> but I think that's a good place to call it for today's stream. We'll pick it up again sometime next week. Please do a, Co a Chloe cosplay. I don't know if I could pull that off. She's got quite the style to try and match. Maybe one day, though. Either way, I hope you all had fun on this stream. Thank you so much for uh, for joining me. 
If you did enjoy, please leave a like down below. It really does help out the channel. Subscribe if you want to be notified the next time I go live, as well as to, you know, remain abreast of when I post that, um, when I post that next stream schedule. Either way, I'll see you again for more mail in the future. It is raining, but as they say, the rain won't stop the mayo. I love the way he says mayo at the end of that. Either way, I'm going to pop out of here. Have a great day, everybody. Good seeing you again, and I will see you before you know it. This is Argon Matrix signing out. Thank you, and have a great night. Bye-bye.